富名声力この世の全てを手に入れた男海賊王ゴールドロジャー彼の死に際に放った一言は人々を海へ駆り立てた俺の財宝か欲しけりゃくれてやる探せこの世の全てをそこに置いてきた男たちはグランドラインを目指し夢を追い続ける世はまさに大海賊時代ありつけの夢をかき集め探し物を探しに行くのさワンピース羅針盤なんて渋滞のもと夏に貸され家事を取るのさ誇りかぶってた魚の地図も確かにまたのなら伝説じゃない個人的な主はだらかのバイオリズムの過程思い過ごせばいいありつけの夢をかき集め探し物を探しに行くのさポケットのコイン So that's who you wanna be my friend We are We are on the cruise! We are! Hey, bitches and bros and non binary hoes! It's time for a very special episode of the Pirate Odyssey. Ordinarily, this podcast is about a longtime One Piece fan, myself, Sour Lemon, discussing the experience of watching the anime with a new viewer, Camp Cam. But today, we'll be taking a detour back to the East Blue. To talk about the live action adaptation produced by Netflix, released in the August of 2023. I will be upfront, I am not going to be kind to this series. Almost everything I have to say is a complaint, and I have a lot of complaints. So, if at any point in time you want to interject something positive, Cam Cam, feel free to do it. But with that said, All right. <laughs> I'll start by asking for your opening thoughts of this adaptation. Um. I did like some parts of it. Like, um, I thought some of the some some of the action scenes were good, and um, like the feel of it was really nice. But did it feel like One Piece? No. So that was kind of disappointed on that end. And then in some parts, it was really boring, and then it looked really bad. So it was just it was very inconsistent. I would say. So yeah. See, I don't even think the feel of it is that nice. <laughs> Oh my god. I I kind of went in with the mindset that like okay, this is my first like time watching a live action like anime. It's like I'm not into that. But um rightfully so. so. <laughs> yeah. So like I kind of went into it like okay, well like I'll think of it as kind of like it's kind of uh, inspired by One Piece. So like I wasn't like going in with like really high expectations, you know. It's it's just it's just so stupid because it's it's inspired you can say it's inspired by one piece but if you say it's inspired by something then you should be telling a different story and not the same story just poorly <laughs> yeah okay okay and like yeah there are some parts where i'm like i don't like this make it stop, <laughs> make it stop. press the pause button uh, who approved of this <laughs> Uh, I am thankful I did not press the pause button that often, because I'm a bigger, um, I, I, otherwise I would have paused the show just, like, constantly to voice my complaints. Yeah, <laughs> well, I, I think we you only paused. It, I was talking yeah. over it quite a lot. <laughs> yeah, I was surprised you didn't, I was expecting a lot of pauses, and I was surprised you didn't, so, like, good for you, you know, well, we are yeah. very impressed. Especially the second uh, session, which was the last, like, two episodes, maybe three, yeah. that we watched. Uh, it was a bit late into the night, so I definitely didn't want to pause it then. But even for the yeah. first session, is like, uh, it doesn't deserve me pausing it. I will just talk over it the entire time. Uh, <laughs> and... <laughs> yeah. It was very, uh, it was very sad. Definitely. Th those last bits. Very sad. I was very depressed. <laughs> <laughs> it was very depressed I... how bad it is. 
<laughs> yes, very. So, like, you know, I'm just not impressed. Um, it's also worth noting that my notes, uh, unlike my notes for the actual series proper, are a lot more specific, but less uh, indicative of what in the plot is going on. So if I ever mm -hmm. read a note and I'm like, wait, why the fuck did I write that down? Don't be surprised. <laughs> okay, okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah, mine is like, um, because like, mine's kind of an order of kind of like what happened. So yeah. And I, I didn't, I tried not to compare it too much to like the manga, because like I said, I was like thinking of fired. If you um, call itself One Piece, then I'm going to compare it to One Piece. <laughs> they, you, like, they so, asked for it. They yeah, called it two piece, <laughs> two piece. <laughs> but I feel like I've heard there's a lot of like with a lot of live action anime. That's like the complaint is that like they're not. It's I guess people are expecting like a one v one and they're not. Like there have there are a lot of changes in live uh, action anime yeah, because those changes are what makes it worse and bad. <laughs> yeah. So like, like I don't know if people, that's like people want like a one to one adaptation because mm -hmm. so far every time they haven't gotten a one to one adaptation it is because it's not one to one that it's bad. Yeah. Uh, yeah. In addition to like other uh, poor reasons, but like the reason why people don't like Death Note is an entirely tonally different from the original Death Note. It's about it's uh, more like a horror slasher film than it is a uh, dram dramatic thriller. The reason people yeah. don't like the uh, Ghost in the Shell adaptation is because instead of an evocative, thought-provoking sci-fi, uh, it's just a generic Hollywood action flick. Um, yeah. It, it's like, you if you want to call the series by the same name, there sure, there's definitely going to be compromises you have to make in making it uh, with real people, especially, like, say, in One Piece, where mm -hmm. uh, people are constantly making facial expressions that don't make sense. Um, yeah, yeah. But you at least should maintain the tone of the series. You should not completely change the tone. And as they did here in the live action, also fail to understand the purpose of any particular character or plot. And thus yeah. completely fail on those ends as well. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I guess, I, I guess I would agree with that. Yeah, because like it totally was, it was very different. So yeah, that, that I, w I would agree with that. But um, so, so yeah, that's what that's kind of what I was thinking. Like, oh, it's inspired by. But there were some parts that I was like, wait, I have to compare it to the manga because like I feel like there are some things we're just missing. That, like, this arc is supposed to be about this, and it's not. Like, I'm confused. Yeah. I so, also yeah. have with me today special guest Captain Kuro of the... Uh, Black Cats? Black is that, Cat what, that what they're called? Yeah, Black Cat Pirates. Kuro of the Thousand Plans. Hi, Captain. Yeah. How's it doing? He's gonna oh, scratch you. What are you gonna do when he scratches you? Nah, he's you? too kind. Yeah, he's like, get away from me. <laughs> like, bro... I came to say hi, that's it. So, as with the uh, actual... as This is more of an adaptation of the anime than the manga for mm -hmm. somewhat understandable reasons. You know, it's more analogous of a medium. Um, and so, rather than start with the Luffy backstory, with the romance dawn on the, with Shanks... Uh, it opens with the opening that the anime uses for the first, like, massive chunk of the series with, like, the Gold Roger, King of the Pirates thing. But it opens with Roger's execution, except actually, like, mm -hmm. does it. Um, and the way it starts with this, I immediately don't like, because it, like, shows you a map of the world, and then it, like, zooms in on the map in this, like, uh, visual effects uh, thing. But the map doesn't look like a real map. <laughs> uh yeah. And I get that there's animation going on on the map. They're, they're, like, animating some, like, sea monsters and ships that are graphics on the map. Um, but usually when you do that kind of thing, you want those things to also look real. Like, you want it to look like a real map, just that the drawings on the map are moving. Uh, but instead, it, it's, it doesn't. It, it just looks, it looks, an, it looks like it's animated. 
Um, and mm -hmm. it's also got a weird yellow um, filter on it. Yeah, see, like, eh, that, that, didn't, that didn't bother me too much. But I, I think what we talked about when we watched it together was, like, the opening words. And yes, you were like, that that, that's what next... pirates do. <laughs> that was my next... That's what pirates do. Like, yeah. what? why are we explaining what pirates are? <laughs> yeah, this is my next note. They, the dialogue <laughs> on that opening uh, visual yeah. effect is also, like... Oh, some pirates like pillage and and uh, steal and and do all bad stuff. But other pirate, or actually, it doesn't even say say that. It says that pirates are all about like romance and adventure or whatever. And it's like, why are you directly explaining what a pirate is to the audience? Yeah. This is what your show should be demonstrating through the actions of its characters and through the plot. You you do you should yeah. not be telling us what a pirate is. It just yeah. establish the setting. Dude, so fucking weird. Yeah, like, they just I should like not it's... have had that opening bit at all. Yeah, and I feel like I feel like that's very common with like um like Hollywood movies and stuff. Like to kind of shove that important piece of information in the very be beginning of your movie. When like I do like I I don't mind that too much but i'm like i don't want to be spoon-fed information you know yeah, like i i made a yeah. note later on in, in my notes as i was re-watching it for unfortunately the third time uh <laughs> it was to the realization that the show kind of treats its audience like babies uh mm -hmm. yeah. like it, there's a bunch of other issues i have with the changes um but it it, it especially since this show um, if anything should draw in an audience of One Piece fans more so than new people, um, mm -hmm. it feels like you're talking down to fans of One Piece. Like, they're all idiots who cannot comprehend what they're watching. Which, to be fair, a lot of them are, uh, especially if you look <laughs> at how this series has been rated. So... Maybe they're not as wrong as uh, I would like them to be, but, like, if you want to actually be a good piece of art, you don't talk down to your audience. We're not children. Yeah. Yeah, the definitely. The series is rated mature. <laughs> children shouldn't be watching it anyways. <laughs> yeah, because in the beginning, when we see Zoro, Mr. Seven, like, Mr. Seven is chopped in half. Like, and... you can clearly see him chopped in half so like obviously it's for mature audiences you know brain somebody and you see like their <laughs> leftover red guts or whatever on the on the deck yeah their brain matter so like um yeah it's not like super detailed or graphic brain matter but it is brain matter <laughs> yeah so it's and, and then like gold roger gets like stabbed in the back and i think he like they stab him and then they go in yes. a little deeper like yeah so come on now <laughs> so that is kind of faithful to the way that executions are presented in the manga um nobody actually ever gets executed by the two people wearing spears um mm -hmm. uh, that we see at least um but it does come across as very silly the way that they go about doing it where it's like we're just gonna poke you in the back like, are you sure you're not gonna, like, I don't know, do something more dramatic and fancy? Uh, like, yeah. A, a guillotine makes a lot of sense. Guillotines or a are, hanging. Yeah, guillotines and hangings evoke fear and terror in the people that are watching them. Um, yeah. Whereas, in this case, you just kind of see Gold Roger collapse on the platform, and you don't even see any blood coming out of him. So it's like, why, why, did, they, why did they do the execution this way? It doesn't make sense. <laughs> yeah. And then, like, in the, um, at least in the anime, like, with his execution, it's, like, kind of a... Well, uh, they don't ever show it. They just yeah, yeah, yeah. They just show, again, the shot of Gold Roger, or, uh, and in this case, he's behind the blades as well that are mm -hmm. about to execute yep. him. Whereas in the live action, the blades are behind him. And again, yep. you're like missing out on the visual symbology of an execution. Where it's like, this guy is at our control, our behest. We have captured him. That's why the yeah. blades are in front of him. It's like, come on. And, and the way I like 
at, at this uh, like at that point in the story in the anime in Logtown, like a Gold Roger is kind of like this this epic. You know, we hear so much about Gold Roger, and he's like this epic figure that we are seeing, and everybody kind of sees that he is this epic great person that has inspired so many pirates throughout the ages. And like, um, you know, we in the very beginning of the live action, we see his execution. We don't get that, you know. Yeah, and I'll tell you one of the reasons exactly why you don't get it, and that is the dialogue. <laughs> see, every Garp? episode of early, well, <laughs> there's Garp. Uh, I'll, <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll, yeah. I'll mention yeah. Garp in a moment, but every episode of the early anime adaptation begins with the following dialogue: wealth, fame, power. Gold Roger, King of the Pirates, attains this and everything else the world has to offer. And his dying words said, You want my treasure, you can have it. I left everything I gathered together in one place, now you just have to find it. Yeah. Um, instead, what this series does is it has Gold Roger say the first part of that statement as well. And so the Gold Roger is saying this, Want to know where my treasure is? I'll tell you. Wealth, fame, power. I found everything this world has to offer. Free yourselves. Take to the seas. My treasure is yours to find. And it, it doesn't hit the same because Gold Roger uh, is the one saying that he found wealth, fame, power, which is already a mischaracterization of Gold Roger anyways from what we know of him, especially later on in the series. But it's less impactful when he is saying it as well. Uh, and, and saying that in saying free yourselves take to the seas that's not like inspiring in the same yeah. way that uh you want my he's not goading people into doing yeah yeah exactly it, the entire point of his speech in in one piece is the the way he inspires people to take to the seas is he's goading them because he knows that that's how they will be encouraged to take action but in here, it's just, like, a really hollow, platitude-like speech. Yeah, yeah, and exactly. and the, and, the, and the way it's voiced and acted is also not as inspiring as well. Yeah, because he just seems like just some maniacal kind of person in the live action. Like, it's just, and, and like, really, he, he's not. Like, he is kind of, like, in the anime, at least, he's kind of, like, free-spirited, but, like, he's not crazy. Like, you know, he you knows know what he's doing. Is really because Luffy is basically the same as Gold Roger is kind of the yeah. point. Uh, you don't actually, you haven't actually seen much of anything of Gold Roger at this point. Mm -hmm. um, but he, it, yeah. Luffy, you, the parallel is supposed to be effectively that Luffy is the next Gold Roger. Um, Wait, but, and but, the... but even more so because there's some plot related reasons why. Um, but in, in here it's... It, I mean, maybe it's the same way because Luffy is also a different character, but like mm -hmm. it, it doesn't it doesn't work in the same way. Yeah, yeah. And I was thinking like in the live action, I don't think Luffy mentions like Gold Roger at all. Yeah. Um, I uh, that I didn't make note of. Yeah, like from what I watched today, I like even, I, I, I'm not even speaking uh, about a part that Luffy has appeared in yet. <laughs> Anyways, Luffy hasn't even appeared yeah, yeah. so far as I'm concerned. <laughs> yeah, but 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 I'm just like I, I'm kind of thinking back, and I'm like, um, yeah, like Luffy's like obsessed with Gold Roger, you know, that's like his hero, and, and like he he hasn't been mentioned. But anyways, yeah, yeah. Um, the also so Garp is the one that does the execution of Gold Roger, and I will say that actually does make a lot of sense. Uh, you learn later on in One Piece the reason Garp is called the hero of the Marines is because he's the one who chased down and supposedly captured Gold Roger. Mm -hmm. um, but based on the context of what we learn about that, and Garp as a character, at least in the actual series proper, um, he should be acting far more conflicted um, about Gold Roger's execution. Like, he should be... Uh, he should be showing, like, more emotions on his face other than, like, irritation that he has to be there or disdain for pirates in general. Yeah, and, like, annoyance that Gold Roger, like, kind of set everybody off, I guess. Yeah, and there's yeah. so much I want to comment about Garp, but I, I think that has to wait until the second half of the series when he becomes far more of an important force in the yeah, plot. Yeah. Um, yeah. 
it's just it, his inclusion in the series is actually just super really silly <laughs> yeah and helmuppo and kobe like i just i didn't even i didn't even make note of any other scenes because i hate them <laughs> i absolutely hate them i hated them in the anime i hated them in the manga i hate them in here i never want to see their faces again well, honestly here's, but here's the thing about the cover story arc that they turn into a several into an arc across the entirety of the live action series for literally no reason um yeah. is that there's actual point to it the those two actually have character development in that yeah. arc um whereas here it's they just very minimal if they're that, like static like, yeah uh kobe is made out to be having some character development but the way it's done is just way less interesting and impactful than in the um actual arc where he decides to like where him and helmeppo are getting like super buff and training super extra hard and, and they have and, and, and kind of like about, like how difficult it is to to get promotions and work their way up and whatnot yeah and the the way they fight like the conflict that they have like like they're much more like at each other's throats in the like in the anime yeah you i think they the actually fight at one point yeah, they do yeah. actually fight multiple times. Actually, yeah, um, it's the reason that Garp even like takes them aboard his ship, if I remember correctly. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. no, no, it's not. No, it's not. I just remember they fight in like the very beginning of that cover arc, which causes like a cannon to explode and blow. Oh up. yeah, yeah. And so they're they're supposed to work as swabbies an extra like few decades or whatever. Um, yeah, yeah, that's right. And and Kobe in response to that is like. Uh, I'll do whatever it takes to be a marine officer. I don't care if I have to work an extra twenty to thirty years. And mm -hmm. and that attitude rubs off on Helmeppo, and then Garp also sees that attitude and is like, "I want to take you under my wing." It's like this whole thing. Uh, and you just don't get that here. Garp just, Garp like sees potential in Kobe that like you don't see as a viewer. Um, yeah, he he sees that he ties a not good. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> whoop dee doo he wow sees, he sees that kobe is willing to tell the truth about his circumstances but only to garp <laughs> yeah only to garp and like under uh pressure yeah <laughs> that's just stupid oh my god i just whatever i hate i hate them garp is moral of the story i hate them character. it's just a different just like every other character in the live action it's just a different character yeah but i still hate them yeah. <laughs> it doesn't make me not like them <laughs> you know like come on at, at least make them likable but i just don't like them um i would also like to say that i think the that the orchestral version of we are that they created for the live action also kind of sucks um <laughs> yeah especially compared yeah. to the actual song yeah i did not like um i did not like any of the music in this uh no in the show I, I think that orchestral version of We Are is the closest it gets to being, like, decent and working. Mm -hmm. um, but it just doesn't have the same energy as the actual We Are. And, of course, they stripped away the lyrics that that do have meaning associated to the series. Yeah. Um, yeah, exactly. And uh, all of the replacement music has none of the impact that the corresponding music has uh in the anime yeah uh, it's just very the, generic yeah the one particular scene of course is in arlong park and you know we'll get there um eventually yeah yeah, yeah. hey Something. bummer bummer bro yeah um so after all of that opening stuff which again uh sucks uh i i have i ask the question why start on the boat uh with luffy by himself uh, and this same question actually does go for the anime too, um, although it's not as bad because uh, the dialogue is less uh, cringe. Um, but full conversation with himself and the bird. <laughs> yeah, but I'll <laughs> and and also, I I had a separate thought when I wrote this down in my notes. It had something to do with like how that anime is structured in like, um. Uh, introducing the way that stuff works versus how it does it in the live action but I, I don't remember that thought um Bummer. but i will always maintain that starting with luffy as a child with shanks makes the most sense and is the best 
thing to do. Uh, yeah. It, 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 if, you de- if you took all of the Shanks scenes that they made, uh, spread throughout the first two, I think, episodes of the live action, and put them in one episode alone at the beginning, that would be an extremely effective way of introducing your main character, uh, what his, like, abilities or whatever are, uh, and more importantly, the themes of the series and what it's about. Uh, And it introduces, and it introduces you to actual pirates and what the, and what the pirates are about, you know? Yeah. In, in, instead, instead of, of like spoon feeding us the information, you know. Yeah, instead of trying to like mix it in with what's going on. Um, and to be fair, in in the case of the anime, if I remember correctly, they do do it all at once in a, in a dedicated episode after yeah. the initial uh like boat and all Vita stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, which is again way better than doing it in the way that the live action does, cutting it up. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't like that either because, like, it's what is it? It's cut up like across like two two episodes. Yeah, it's cut up across the the first two episodes. Um, yeah, and the and it, and it, what each episode is like an hour long. It's just, yes. ugh, it's There's just eight annoying. episodes each an hour long. Yeah, it, and I just I hate when like I don't know I I hate in shows like where it's just like. Where it just like pauses, like it just cuts the story off. Pause yeah. when it's just like oh, you could have so, like fit that in in its own separate thing, or just put it all together and not like put a stopgap in the main story that's going yeah. on. So this is a thing that's very common in um, Western television shows or uh, in Hollywood television shows where mm-hmm. they have multiple like plot lines or ideas going on that they want to show simultaneously, and so to break up like the pacing. Um, oftentimes they'll show multiple different, uh, perspectives or, or, uh, uh, points in, like, time or whatever happening in the Mm -hmm. same episode. Um, and, you know, depending on the show, it might work. Um, but there's very good reason why One Piece as a series shows the entirety of its flashbacks in one contiguous form at a client, oftentimes. Uh, especially later on in the series for right now for in the east blue section it doesn't do this um but it'll do it at like a climactic scene in the uh action uh it'll cut to a flashback it'll show the entirety of the flashback and it's like damn now i'm even more emotionally invested in what's going on back to the action Um, yeah 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 definitely instead here it's trying to create like parallels between the flashbacks and what's currently happening Oftentimes in the most like silly and contrived ways. Yeah, because um, I'm like I'm like where's the parallel? I don't get it. Yeah, <laughs> so but, what what my thought was. Yeah, uh, and also on top of that, it needlessly breaks up the action, um, be or it breaks up like the pacing because as it stands, the way that the pacing is, there's no need to to cut away to anything else. The like you know you don't need to to transition or anything. You can just keep going. Well, why don't you just yeah. keep going? <laughs> yeah. Oh, and then, like, it was so dumb. Like, the way, like, Luke, Kid Luffy, like, stabs himself under the eye. He literally, like, shoves the knife under his eye. And it looks like he shoves it pretty deep. Which is this little bitty scar. I'm like, bro, you you trying well, to take out, like, the your bone? Like, I'm just confused. Yeah. I was I, just I mean, like, that was... I don't have that much of a problem with how that was presented, to be honest. And the entire, like, uh thing with luffy's stabbing is that he was actually aiming for his own eye um at least in yeah. the manga um and he just mm, okay uh yeah so it, it like makes sense but as as we talk more about the each every flashback i'll mention how shit child actors are <laughs> <laughs> poor munchkins man they're so cute though like uh, <laughs> they're trying their best out here okay i mean <laughs> luffy luffy's an usops um i haven't this is going to be more than one like part uh as indicated by like the thumbnail that i made that i showed at the start of the uh mm-hmm. and will be on the youtube um 
this this will be more than one part uh in part because we only made notes for like the first four episodes but also because i have a lot of fucking shit to say um yeah so as it stands with the third rewatch uh i particularly noted how shit specifically luffy and usopp are as children those those child actors zoro's child actor actor (laughs) does an okay job for reasons that i'll talk about when it's relevant uh but those two in particular do shit job (laughs) yeah he uh oh my god yeah like kid usopp (laughs) when his mom dies like the way he cries over it is just like so not believable and so (laughs) fakey he was like mom don't die mom (laughs) i mean i mean that that munchkin's really trying his hardest you know (laughs) Yeah, it's uh, I I've watched uh, a pl- a lot huh. of your movie sucks recently, and <laughs> he always constantly rails on child actors. And it's like, first of all, that's kind of exploitative. If you think about it too hard. But second of all, uh, uh, specifically in Hollywood, you know, there's a lot of nepotism happening, and so child yeah. actors will get hired based on their com- uh, connections rather than their talent. And so he constantly complains. Please hire child actors based on their talent, not based on their uh, connections. My Christ, hire somebody who's doing like theater in middle school. <laughs> yeah, at least. And, and yeah, and, and kid and kid Luffy, I don't know. He's just kind of like insufferable. I feel like I don't know. The weirdest thing about <laughs> me mentioning the nepotism thing is that uh, the um uh act hiring um but in casting this word uh mm-hmm. the casting for the rest of the live action doesn't seem all that based on nepotism so far as i can tell at least like okay you, you have luffy is played by inaki godoy which is a name you would have fucking never heard of outside as an american outside of this series yeah and then um the girl who played Alvita, I'm going to try my best to say her name. Her name is uh, I- Ilia Isoraiz Paulina. And I haven't heard of her before, but uh, she's she's great. Oh, my God. She does her own music. She's been in a lot of independent films. Like, she's uh, she's amazing. A lot of like either Latin American or Spanish ones, I imagine. Yeah. Yeah, and she's been in a few uh, Western ones as well, and like like she's in a couple comedy ones recently, and uh, she's she's gorgeous. Like I love her, I love her. So I'm gonna watch co- like a few of her movies because like learning, she's really cool. Learning that also makes me one further enhances my belief that uh, the reason the acting is shit has uh, way more to do with the directing and the script than it does with the actors. <laughs> Oh yeah! The, the, oh, the, the adult yeah, actors it... at least are like they're trying their hardest, man. They're they're trying to make it work. <laughs> and yeah, and yeah, Be, because like you know, like I did theater like all through middle school, all through high school. Like I've been in a, a couple plays like in my community uh, as an adult. So like I know how hard it is trying to deal with like a craft script, but like. Man, so I'm like, I know you guys are trying. I really know you guys are trying. trying like, so I get it. <laughs> Be- because, like, and, and they're, like, really good. Like, I can tell, like, th- they're really good. But, eh. and, and, like, um, too, like, um, M- McKinney, who plays Zoro, you know, like, I'm like, who, who? I'm so irritated. Oh, my God. Zolo. That's not Zoro. Yeah, Zolo. That's yeah. not our guy. That's yeah. Zolo. While we were watching the live <laughs> action. And, uh, honestly shit like this is the reason why i at least think the, it, our reaction to it should have been live streamed because i was talking over it the entire time yelling at it constantly uh and also we made jokes like this isn't zoro so let's name him zolo just like the viz media translation <laughs> yeah because like M- mckinney was trying his hardest as well like i've seen uh, like i watched uh one of his movies and like he's a great actor but like the script it made him have so little lines, made him so stoic, they're, and, like... Yeah, they're asking m- him to be so stoic and bland and boring, and... He's just, yes, they're, and they're monotone. Just, like, quote-unquote cool, 
instead of like totally and he has dead how eyes. the actual Zoro is cool. <laughs> yeah, and he has like dead eyes, like ugh. and I watched a couple of McKinney's interviews as well. And oh my god, he's so animated, he's cute, he's funny. I'm like, you could have done so much with him. Oh my god, he's perfect. Like, he's perfect for Zoro. Like, and you screwed him up. You screwed him up because you couldn't write a good script. I'm so mad. <laughs> oh, oh god. Script, man, please. <laughs> I'm like, man, the next one, give that man more lines. Give him more lines. Like, he, give him a personality. He's not a rock, you know? I'm just irritated. It's irritating. Uh, <sighs> okay. I think I had a good. Yeah. We are talking had a good very rant. far ahead of where we are in the plot right now, though. I, oh, no, I'm so sorry. I went very I'm meticulously so through it. We're still Luffy on the boat. Uh, and I had another <laughs> comment before we move off of the boat. Uh, and that's when, whenever uh, Godoy makes the, the Luffy pose where he throws his arms up in the air when he's shouting, it doesn't quite look right. And this actually mm -hmm. might be Morinaki's fault than the actual directing as well. And I think, And the reason, I think, is because he, like, puts his arms in front of him instead of above or behind oh him. yep yep that's so what it is, so it looks like he's not actually as exuberantly um doing the shouting uh mm -hmm. as luffy actually is in the series where he's like full-blown bending his back out and reaching his arms out behind him um yeah yeah, I, I think so too. And he's like, he's so cute. He's super adorable. As I feel, feel like as Luffy, but like, um, but yeah, I don't know. I mean, he tried. He, he, tried. <laughs> he tried. Um. So, uh, and then the boat sinks instead of a storm happening. And the reason I point this out is, uh, it has to do with Nami and the need to have a navigator on the ship. Uh, it's. And so having the boat sink means one of two things, potentially both. Um, Luffy is a shit seafarer in general, uh, or the, sh the dinghy that he had was really shit. And so it just had mm -hmm. holes in it, that, and it was naturally going to sink anyways. Which is, it seems to be more implied the case, because he was bucketing water out of the ship and it sank anyways. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so having it be a storm uh, better shows that this is an inadequacy that Luffy has in terms of navigating, that he needs somebody else to make up for it because he didn't avoid the storm or know how to handle it. Yeah. And, and so, like, even, even minor stuff like that it just goes to show that they just don't understand the series. Yeah. And uh, I I kind of noticed that too, and I just like what was wasn't a huge fan of that. Yeah. I was just uh, like, okay, well, you know, we'll we'll just keep going, we'll just keep trucking along, I guess. Yeah. Uh, and then we get to Elvida um raiding the ship, um, it, which I did think was cool. It, it was all right, um, but it was worse than the likes of the Pirates of the Caribbean, and the reason why. Actually, I haven't seen those movies in a while, so maybe they do some of this too. Um, is that there's so many cuts. There mm. is constantly changing camera. And it makes the action a lot more indecipherable and um, hard to follow when you're cutting between different cameras every half second to a second. And it's like, I, I want to see what's happening. Stop yeah. preventing me from seeing what's happening. And this is yeah. why people love movies like John Wick so much. Is because it's an action movie that is always showing you the action. Mm hmm Yeah. And I, like, I've never seen John Wick and I don't really like action movies. So I'm kind of like, meh, I thought it was fine. <laughs> So I'm like, I'm I'm like kind of easy to please when it comes to like action in movies. At I'm least, like, I don't know, it looked cool. At least it wasn't using shaky cam. <laughs> or like the big fisher lens, you know, like the blur, you know, like that was I mean, fine. it's a, I'm sure in some of those shots it was also using that. Um, yeah, but I didn't notice it. I didn't notice it. It was that noticeable yet. Yeah. But um, the first yeah, but... episode is probably the best when it comes to the, the yes. cinematography. Because it's yes. doing the least amount of that and then 
when you get to episode three, it becomes extremely apparent just how much they're doing it and how bad it is. Um, yeah, that's what I... I. Which is why I wait until that episode to have like specific notes about it. Yeah, I, I, that was my first line of my notes. <laughs> <laughs> this is a camera work bad. <laughs> Literally. And, um, yeah, and Ilya, uh, she did that stunt by herself when Alvita is, like, um, hanging from the rope and sliding down. Um, she, she did that stunt by herself, so I thought that was cool. She didn't use a stunt double or anything. Do you was, like, good for her. Oh yeah, the, the next thing I wrote down is you mentioned this when we were watching it. Is Elvita too pretty? <laughs> yeah, because I saw because I was like, I was like, who is this actress? Oh my god, she's gorgeous. Like I love her. And it's a Latina, okay. <laughs> and Elvita is then... <laughs> supposed to be really fucking ugly. And that's like the entire point behind her character. She's really fucking ugly until she eats the slim slim fruit. <laughs> then she's yeah and, and yeah because the people on twitter were like oh no it was on reddit people on reddit were like is alvita too pretty i'm like shut up i mean they <laughs> have a point <laughs> i i'm i'm not gonna like comment on whether it's a good or a bad thing but i mean it is a thing <laughs> i mean i thought it was fine like i thought she did a good job playing alvita and like getting alvita's character of being like this kind of menacing like um most yeah, of, narcissist. Like, good chunk of like, the early One Piece villains are just narcissists. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and, and and like uh, man, in her battle axe that looks like a uh, that has it has like the pink stones that she uses to like bash people's heads in. I'm like, dang, that looks so yeah. cool. <laughs> I thought it was interesting. The head, like, I yeah. think it was like three different maces uh, mm -hmm. that she had to use. I thought that was interesting and neat. Yeah, and I thought her outfit, like, really matched what Alvita would wear. Like, her hair looked great. Like, I'm always, like, interested in, like, costume designing, makeup. Like, so I thought I thought they did a great job. Like, A+, plus, you know, for me. And she did her own stunts. Like, good for her. Love her. Uh, I, I did find a little bit of her dialogue a little uh, odd, though, because it was she wanted Zoro to come after her. Zolo. Yeah. And it's like, I I get that you're a narcissist, um, and uh, you know it, it would I would I guess be good for your reputation if you took down a notable bounty hunter. But at the same time, like, you you want him to go after you. And yeah, I'm, I'm I, like, like, I like do you have a crush on Zoro? Because that would make sense, you know. Like, I, I don't know what the but... highest, I don't know if it's ever revealed the highest bounty he turns in before he joins Luffy, but I wouldn't be surprised if it was over five million. If it was over Alvitos, yeah. So it's just like, yeah, I, I didn't understand that bit either, um, because like uh, the in the anime, like she doesn't even does she mention? No, I think she does mention Zoro because like I think Zoro is after maybe. Did, does she mention Zoro um, in the anime? She... No, I'm not sure. She, uh, she does, but not to the extent of, like, I want him to chase after me. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but it, that would be a very minor line, and I don't remember clearly what it is. Yeah, but it's almost like, you know, like a weird, it's just like a weird thing to bring up in the yeah. live action, I feel like. But like yeah, <laughs> not not just as weird like, as some of the other things they bring up. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Um... And, so, and I thought like, the ship and I thought the ship the, the ships looked great, you know. Oh like, yeah, her ship one, looked one amazing. of the one of the best parts is the set design. Although there's some time actually, I think the set design for the second episode is kind of shit in retrospect because it all takes place in that one circus tent and the lighting is like atrocious. Yeah, it's it's supposed to be like different colors, like clown lighting or whatever. But then it's like. In it's terms, to, yeah. in terms of what's the viewer the ex the viewing experience is supposed to be. Um, it just doesn't look good. Um, and I think also, it's supposed... taking place all in tent is, like, clearly meant to be, uh, like, a budget-saving thing. It's like, oh, we don't have to make as many sets if we all make it take place in one set. <laughs> yeah, and that's one of, that was kind of one of my gripes, because, like, you, you know, like, I, um, in One Piece, like, everything happens all over the place, you know? Yeah, adventure. And I feel like... So I feel like um, they make everything happen like all at once in one space, and I was like, "Is that for budget reasons?" You know, like you. I mean, po it's possible, uh, but or is it just easier on the my understanding? Did have a very large budget. Yeah, so it's hard to say. 
Yeah, be- because it just like when everything happens all at once, like there are people involved that shouldn't be, and then you miss out on some villains, and it's just like it messes up the flow of everything. Like, anyways, but that's um, we can get there when we get there, you know. At the same time, I don't like there were some bad decisions, believe me, about the plot like happening in the way it happens. Um, but in terms of, like, the moving around and, and the sets and, like, the locations, I actually don't think it, it, it doesn't seem to be for budgetary reasons outside of the circus tent, um, because it would be really easy to make a really, really cheap set or even just find a hill for, like, the Syrup Village conflict if they were to do it in the same way that they does in the anime, um, like, I guess you would have to do some shipwrecks in water for, uh, the, um, Baratier, but that wouldn't be that different from what they already had anyways, and realistically, even if they had the Don Creek fight, uh, it wouldn't have to be, like, that different. And they showed most of the places in, um, the, the Kokuyashi Village Island place, Arlong Park. Yeah. Um, so, it, it actually doesn't seem like they had any budget uh restrictions outside of the buggy everything with buggy taking place inside the fucking tent (laughs) with which has like nothing inside of it (laughs) yeah i don't know they were like trying to make it like a menacing circus kind of thing like menacing clowns but like um yeah all that failed for different reasons we'll get there though um yeah 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 so uh so the Alveda pirates pick up the barrel out of the ocean, um, and it's the, and it's the middle of the night when Luffy gets out of the barrel, and this is when it becomes immediately apparent that this Luffy is a different character because he gets out of the barrel and he's like, "Oh, shh, be quiet, Kobe. Everyone is sleeping, and I don't want to be found out." <laughs> yeah, and uh. And in and, and the anime, like, Luffy immediately pops out and he's loud and he's like, I'm hungry, I'm gonna eat, yeah. I'm just gonna grab some food. <laughs> just yeah. there's a away. And, and the plot is deliberately constructed for him to get away with that because it's in the middle of a ship raid going on. Yeah. Um, so there are everyone, there's already a lot of loud conflict happening. Uh, and so they, like, Alvida and everybody else doesn't notice when Luffy bursts out of an a barrel and takes out a couple of her crew when it's in like a remote kitchen storage area. Yeah. And, um, and, and I, I love, uh, uh, I, I do like in the live action when Kobe and, um, Luffy are talking, but like Kobe does bring up about Alvida and Luffy, um, you know, is supportive of it. Like, 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 supportive, as in, like, oh, well you, well, you should leave, or you should, like, get away, like, you don't have to stay, you know, kind of thing. But, in the anime, like, Luffy's like, I hate you, you're, like, a coward. <laughs> yeah, yeah, also true, yeah. <laughs> yeah, which is, like, that. that's who Luffy is. Luffy yeah. is honest it's, and blunt and to the point, you know? It's, it's such different approaches to how Luffy liberates and encourages people. Whereas yeah. uh, the in the original series, Luffy does it oftentimes through goading, um, and and being very blunt about their shortcomings, yeah, uh, and then from there inspiring them through his actions. In here, he basically like he's he's almost like a therapist for a lot of for characters. <laughs> yeah, like, you yeah. Can do better, I support you. And I'm like, who is this man? Uh, mm, Luffy's not like that. Like, like Luffy, he's always like, you know, he he's there, but kind of like a kind of a uh, like I don't know how to say it, but like he's quietly, confidently like, like I am the supportive friend. So when you need me, I will help you. But like, I will give you a stern talking to when you need it. Okay, like I will be the big brother that's gonna talk trash to you when you need it. You know. Yeah. And then, yeah, in the live action, he's just kind of like, dee, 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 everything's sunshine and rainbows, you know, and it's just like, kind of throws you off a little bit, you know, because I do like Luffy's kind of, in the anime, I do like his spunky, rambunctious attitude, you know. 
Like, yeah. he's got an attitude. Yeah. Uh, and so I, I also put down here that it's an unnecessary contrivance for your conversation with Kobe, the whole, like, be quiet thing, because it, it's apparent that the some of the reason they did it that way is so that the two of them could have a one-on-one conversation in the manner that they do. Mm-hmm. But yeah. as, as I noted before, you didn't actually need to do that because there is already... If you did it, the plot the same way, there was already enough of a reason for them to have that conversation, but like without trying to mute their voices or whatever. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's just it's just weird. Yeah. yeah. Um. Also, uh, all this stuff with Kobe in in the first episode is one of the very few times in the series in which the shitty camera work is actually good, uh, and and contributes. Because it does that thing where, like, zoom in's closer and closer on Kobe's face because he's getting, like, mm-hmm. more and more, like, nervous and unsure of himself and whatever. Um, yeah, it feels like everything's closed in on him, like, kind of like a yeah. panic attack, you know? Um, and, and that makes sense, what's happening. Yeah. Uh, but they do that for other characters, like, all the time throughout the rest of the series, and it doesn't make sense there. <laughs> no. And it's annoying, and it's just, like, it makes you feel awkward. It's It's very awkward. Like, I'm like, I'm uncomfortable. I can see your pores, okay? Like, it's just, I don't want to see the pores on your nose. I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, and so, in this conversation is where it first cuts to some of Luffy's backstory. Uh, because he, he mentions to Kobe, I think it's the, in, in regards to him being made of rubber. Uh, he's mm-hmm. like, it's a long story. <laughs> <laughs> and he starts talking about the backstory and it's like it's just it's just a weird place to put it um i think i might have actually skipped something but um i think the the rubber thing comes later uh yeah either way they, i did show some of the backstory here and it's just weirdly placed yeah and um on the ship when he first uses his uh like gum gum fruit um powers like it's just like weird like uh, immediately when he uses the powers i was like what the heck like that looked so off but then like when he stretches his arms to like pull himself up like it looks less awkward i don't Uh, know that initial move was just like super awkward looking oh like the cheek pull yeah 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 Uh, yeah that that one was a little weird they they always try to do it quickly to make it not dwell on it so that you don't think about it looking weird because it's always gonna Mm -hmm. look weird uh, no matter how good visual effects are, it, it's always yeah. going to look unnatural. Um, I was mostly fine with the way that the rubber works. How the rubber is utilized, not as much a fan of. <laughs> mm. Yeah. Um, I can't also, really think of any moments specifically where that's well, the case. Uh, but In some cases, it's the lack of utilization. And it's the in the beginning of episode five, he does the gum gum balloon. And he's like, I didn't know I could do the gum gum balloon. It's like, yeah, what? <laughs> Excuse me? <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah, you didn't know. Like, what? You, 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 know? you definitely at least should have known that you can do that. Yeah. So, like, what's happening? Yeah. 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 Um, also, Luffy's backstory, uh, the entirety of it has, like, a weird yellow lighting. Um, I hate that. I don't know if they were trying to go for like the beat. You know, there are a lot of scenes that have that weird yellow lighting. Yeah. And I, I hate it. Don't get it. So ugly. It, it, it doesn't look like you're outdoors. <laughs> like, why is everything be always being filtered through yellow? Like, have some, have natural sunlight, please. It, it might restrict your filming times depending on where you're doing it. But. Also, you could, like, make your set look like it has natural sunlight as well. Yeah. <laughs> please. Please. So, yeah. It just makes it look, like, dirty and grainy, and it makes some of the characters' skin look weird. I'm like... Sickly. Yeah. Yeah, sickly. It's just... Uh, I hate it. It's so ugly. It was... It's disturbing. Disturbing. Um, I... I wrote down not a huge fan of attack calling, and I don't remember the context for that. Maybe I meant that I'm not a huge fan oh. of the attack calling. 
Uh, uh, do, do you mean when, like, Zoro says no, that, that's like... Later. that's later. Okay, okay. Um, I think I wrote that down because I'm not a huge fan of how it's done. Like, I don't think that Luffy is, like, yelling in, in an exaggerated enough of a manner uh, when he's doing it. Um, hmm. Can Cannot totally confirm, but I think that's that's the point. I'm trying to think. Yeah. I mean, it's more like a yelling, kind of, like a shout. Yeah, uh, but like... Not like a purposeful? Is that what you mean? I, I don't know, let's not dwell on it too much. <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, we then transition, uh, according to my n not very plot-relevant uh, notes, to Zoro <laughs> fighting Mr. Seven. Um, and... I I did think that scene was beautiful. Yeah, um it was cool. Uh, it's it's too bad Zolo's such a frowner. <laughs> I know, man. But but Zora when he's first introduced, man, he looks good. He's so handsome. Let me tell you, he's so handsome. He, like he, eh. it's definitely cool. He's a Chad. He's a Chad. Uh, but also it, like, he's racist. First person he kills on screen is black. <laughs> I mean. I mean, look, we're just following the anime and the manga, okay? Like, that's true, you know that's that's pretty um uh, uh source uh, material. It's Our canon, story. basically. Yeah. Um. And um, I I did I like I loved all the candles, the way they like lingered on the can on the flickering like flames, and I don't know. I, I did. Like, I feel like I didn't believe it when he put all those can candles out. I I didn't. I believed I didn't, it. I didn't <laughs> like there wasn't. It didn't feel like there was a good enough gust of wind or that he, like, moved with enough speed and strength to cause it. Like, if if they demonstrated that there was, like, a wave of wind created from the swinging of his sword through some kind of visual effects, I would have mm -hmm. believed that. Instead, the candles just kind of, like, go out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And I don't know, it looked cool, and I loved it. <laughs> I mean, it looks cool, but I, I wasn't totally sold. I was sold. It look, okay, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's Zolo. Zolo looks so handsome, I believed it, okay. And, um, I, and I, I loved, like, the dark forest. I mean, it was just beautiful. Like, where they filmed it was absolutely gorgeous, so, like, yeah. yeah. And the choreography was, was quite good. Oh yeah, the the action scene w was great. Like, uh, let me tell you, McKinney wor worked hard to like get that get that done. So like, good for him. Yeah. And um, and he does have that little bit of like a pad, uh, like a pouty, pouty is that the word? Anyways, he has a little bit of like a grumpy face, you know, whenever he's talking to Mister Seven. Yeah, I mean, rightfully irritated, but like the the thing that's always missing is that Zoro whenever he fights somebody, has a cocky grin on his face. He's not oh, yeah. fighting... He's always he's, got... He's always trash-talking, you know? Yeah. Uh, well, he is trash-talking in the live action, too, but he's doing it with such, like, a, a serious... Bored and tone. ...sarcastic and bored tone. Uh, whereas... It doesn't hit, you know? Yeah, whereas actual Zoro, he, like, that, that cocky smile always does so much to make him seem like more threatening and bigger and more than anything cooler um kind of like rebellious and yeah, like you know it's because it's not it's not just confidence that he's displaying when he wears that smile but also his like uh how much he loves fighting and his determination to to get better like it, it shows that he's excited about anyone that he fights in duels for whatever reason it might be whereas if he's never smiling and he's always bored and serious it's like uh, do you, i i thought you wanted to be the world's greatest swordsman why do you look so unenthused about getting stronger and testing yourself? yeah yeah and um i guess i can't well i guess i'll bring it up now but like um 
e like even like when he's tied up in the yard or like where he's got to be tied up for a week like i think luffy is the one that's like well don't you want to do something different don't you have a dream i'm like zora already knows what his dream is like he doesn't need to be reminded of it like what i'm confused <laughs> Uh, Luffy the therapist, you know? <laughs> yeah, Luffy the therapist. Um, uh, because that's the point, like, of One Piece is that everybody has their own dream. That they don't need to really be reminded of it, you know? They're all chasing something and they know it, you know? Yeah. I actually... So. I, I, to, but to the credit of that scene, despite the fact that Zoro is so... Uh, Zolo is so fucking annoyingly written... Um, there were some funny lines where he, uh, such as, does the position come with a tattoo on your face? And mm -hmm. if if they actually wanted to recruit me, they should have sent someone better than Seven while giving the middle finger to indicate. Number yeah, one. yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. That 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 was cute. That, that was, was cute. That was, that was clever. It was, it was neat. Um, yeah. After the Zoro fight. Uh, we transition back to Luffy and Kobe, who have escaped Alveda. Uh, and <laughs> so Kobe asks how Luffy can stretch. And it's like, first of all, I, I think Kobe has heard of Devil Fruits before. Uh, but uh, second of all, uh, Luffy responds by saying, it's a long story. And it's like, no, it's not that long of a story, at least for the actual Luffy to tell. Uh, you just say you ate a fucking devil fruit. <laughs> it's like yeah. ten words. I ate a devil fruit. I'm a gum gum man now. I'm a rubber man. <laughs> Ta -da. Um, and so he's and like, even like nope, long and after story, the backstory time. <laughs> yeah, and then even after like the backstory, like Kobe's like, you ate a gum gum fruit. It's like yes, yeah. That could have been said in like five seconds. Yeah. <laughs> and it's, it's like, yeah. and Luffy's like, now let me tell you a story about how my life got flipped, turned upside down. <laughs> God. Exactly. It's so, it's so stupid. <laughs> uh, um, so I, I, right at the beginning of the backstory, I immediately write down, child actors are really shit and he's not emotive <laughs> enough. I don't believe any of his emotions. Uh, he's got no expression on his face. Uh, all of his, like, physical actions feel very half-assed. Uh, yeah. The children don't know how to express emotions that they aren't at that point in time feeling. Um, at least not this child. <laughs> yeah, like, ch children are, like, children are bad liars, and so, like, <laughs> so, like, children are bad actors. <laughs> yeah. I mean, there are some great child actors, you know, but, like, I mean, I mean, th th those kids were, like, abused by the industry, so, like, you know, that's a whole other discussion, but, like, you know, as, as as long as these kids are, like, not being abused by the industry, then, like, you know, I, I guess, well, I guess I'll deal with the sucky child actors, so, like. Yeah. Uh, so, Luffy is frustrated that Shanks won't let him on his crew, and so that's actually what happened in the first piece of the backstory that I didn't write anything down about is that was when he stabbed his eye and Shanks stitched it up and he was, and Shanks like moralized to Luffy about like the point of uh, scars or whatever, which is fine. He's talking to a kid. Other moralizations that happen later in the series don't have, I have much bigger problems with. Uh, mm -hmm. That's evidently why I didn't write it down at first. Uh, so this is the aftermath of that. And he's mad at Shanks that he won't let him go on the crew. And he's and he's going through, like, the storage room of the bar or whatever. And he's, like, kicking mm -hmm. shit. Uh, and he just randomly finds the special box. And he and he gets curious about that special box in particular. Uh, and so he opens it. And he sees uh, what is probably made of cake, but looks like it's made of plastic. <laughs> yeah. Okay, because I'm like, you could have gotten a really, like, good, like, cake designer and, like, made it look really, really realistic. I mean, like, hello, we all, we, we've all seen the memes. Is it cake? Yeah. <laughs> uh, there, there was actually a uh, show produced by Twitch streamers recently. Uh, the What's the price? Or It's basically the price is right, but fucking Twitch streamers. Mm -hmm. uh, and one of the bits that they did. Uh, was they had a table of different foods uh, that the streamers had to guess from far away whether or not any particular one of them was real or fake. 
Um, and they, from a distance, they all looked pretty fucking real for the most part. And and mm-hmm. those ones were made of cardboard even. And not oh, wow. Not, not other types of food. Oh, um, wow. Or they might have been made of other shit too, but it seemed like it was mostly cardboard. Uh, point being, though, like you can make fake food look realistic uh, or other food look like other food. And this one just, it did not. Um, it didn't pass. Yeah, it didn't and I didn't. Pass. I didn't like Shanks actor. I to thought, be honest, I thought Shanks's actor did a fine job. Um, I, I didn't. I didn't really. I thought he was boring. I don't know. I think that if I think that might be you finding the writing more boring than the actor. Maybe that was it. Yeah, I, that I probably was it. I don't think the actor did that bad of a job, except for maybe the point where he scares off the um, uh, sea monster. Uh, he, I think, I think he probably could have looked more intense there, instead of relying on the visual effects to do it for him. Um, yeah, because like Shanks in the anime, like he actually looked like scary, you know. Well, yes, there's that. But now that you remind me, uh, while I didn't have that many problems with Shanks in the live action, he is also distinctly worse than he is in the actual series, uh, anyways, because he's a lot more rambunctious and expressive in yeah. the actual series. Yeah, and like um he is he's kind of like a big kid as well, I feel like, you know. Yeah. Whereas and and here it seems like he he's too much m- of a parent. <laughs> yeah, exactly. He's more of a father figure, you know. Yeah. Like an actual father. And um which is like fine, but like it's not Shanks. So like Yeah. Yeah. Uh so it also, in regards to the devil fruit, uh, I have to ask the question, why did he eat something that tastes like shit? Uh, devil fruits, canonically, taste like shit. So why did he take a bite of the devil fruit and then think to himself, I'm going to keep eating this? <laughs> and he even says, like, later on in that flashback, like, do you, do you know anything about devil fruit? Yeah, they taste bad. <laughs> it's like, why did you keep eating it? And the like, reason I have to ask this question, it ties into my other question of why did he eat it like this, is because the way he ate it originally is he was really distracted by something else going on, and mm-hmm. he just, like, casually put it in his mouth. Yeah. <laughs> Whereas here, he, he, like, saw the super special box, and he opened the box out of curiosity, and he, and he like, thought to himself... I, I want to try this thing that I see or whatever. And it's like And took multiple bites out of it. Yeah. Multiple and he was savoring each bite. <laughs> he really was, man. He didn't even shove the whole thing in his mouth. Oh, he was you know, like chewing it, savoring it, like Yeah. It had to have been something good. That that little kid actor must have been eating something good. Yeah, I mean I'm not surprised that the food that they made him eat tasted good if if they actually had him eat something. It's there there were multiple shots edited together in that one bit. Mm-hmm. So like it's entirely possible that they didn't have him actually eat anything. Um but yeah. yeah, I I wouldn't be surprised if he ate something good. Uh it's just that you you then have to make him act like he's eating something bad, and he didn't act like he was eating something bad. He just I, he just ate it. <laughs> I think he kind of winced like at first, but it was very like poorly. Like he was kind of like, mm. <laughs> and well, that was it. It wasn't, it, it wasn't distinctly it was... a wince. Uh, like you should have him like spit him out, spit it out as though it tastes bad. <laughs> yeah, and then just be like, mm. <laughs> I mean, I, some kids do that. Like, yeah. when I worked in daycare, like, th- there are some kids that would eat something, like, kind of sour, and they'd spit it out, and I'm like, oh, why don't you take another bite? And they're like, okay. You know, like, and they'll keep eating it. Something like yeah. that. Like, it's... I mean. Oh, it's just stupid. Yeah. They could have uh, tried harder, basically. I also have a problem with Monkino, which is the bartender at the bar. Um... In the original series, she almost always has, like, a smile on her face. And she's a a rather, like, jovial, happy-go-lucky person. Uh, Whereas here, she's always frowning. Mm -hmm. Just (laughs) always frowning. She's serious. Yeah. Complaining. (laughs) So silly. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah, you know, they, they tried, but, uh, I mean, she, they, they told it's her boring to do too. the wrong thing. They gave, they gave the actress playing Makino the wrong set of instructions between either the writing or the directing or both. This is the wrong set of instructions. Have her smile. Yeah, I don't. Have everybody smile more, for Christ's sake. Have everybody look like they're having a good time filming, okay? What is this is a fun series. Why is this one not fun? <laughs> it doesn't feel fun. It feels like very serious and like the uh the actor is like the only one having fun and then uh, Luffy's act Luffy is the one that's supposed to if anything make everybody else in the series try to have more fun like in terms of the writing and, he, there, and nobody else has fun. And even Luffy yeah. kind of doesn't have fun for half of it, too. <laughs> yeah, and then I was kind of, like, thinking, like, when I was watching this, I was like, you know, One Piece is, like, this happy, like, fun, like, adventure. Yes, has serious moments, but, like, you know, it, we overcome them, and, and we're happy again, and we feel f fulfilled, and it's just, like, this one doesn't have that ring to it, you know? It's just not fun. Um, yeah, it's not a good time, bro. Yeah. Uh, so... Uh, then you have the, the guy walking into the bar, uh, the, the grouchy mountain bandit, and he shatters the bottle, and it's, the camera shoots this super dramatically, the way he slaps the bottle on the table and it breaks. Go real close up. Yeah, and, and I think they slow it down a little bit, too. Yeah, because you can uh, see the individual pieces of glass. <laughs> yeah, and... It, and what's weird about that is that in the original series, he shatters the bottle over uh, Shanks' head. So he drenches Shanks yeah. in liquor, too, instead of just the bar and the ground, which is more dramatic and more offensive. Um, yeah. And it, and it shows Shanks is definitely the bigger man for, like, letting that happen, you know? Yeah. Um, the... Next thing I know is not is is out of the the backstory. You have anything to say about anything more about that portion? Yeah, I think I'm good. All right. So when he's conversing with Kobe um, about this stuff, and he gets Kobe irritated at Kobe's lack of self confidence, he slaps him. Uh, <laughs> and what is always the case in the original series when the other characters think that each other are acting stupid uh is they whack him on the head with a fist mm -hmm. uh and i have to and i wonder why would they have luffy slap kobe instead of whacking him on the head i i, I don't understand like what the purpose of that change is it doesn't necessarily change anything important but i don't understand why you would even change it at all yeah I don't know, maybe they feel like a knock on the head is, like, um... Too aggressive? <laughs> yeah, maybe it's, like, too aggressive. Like, in anime, it's, like... Oh, in anime, it's kind of expected. Like, a lot of people, like, like Sakura no knocks Naruto in the head a lot like that, you know? And so, Nami like... does it, like, all the time, extremely frequently. And so, going forward, as, as they do at least one more season of this, uh, because it has been greenlit, uh, you're... you're cutting you, um, this kind of subtle change already changes drastically a lot of character act interactions going forward uh because nami will no uh, well apparently no longer be whacking luffy and zoro and others on the head to keep them in check yeah and and, and that's and that's, yeah, that is how she keeps everybody in line. Like, when everybody's arguing with each other, she just whacks them, and they're like, oh, okay. You know, that they're, 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 like, like scared. Right, yeah, got a point. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen to the navigator. Yeah. The navigator's always right. <laughs> yeah, and, and, she, and she knows what's up, and she, like, takes control and takes command, you know? Yeah. Like, so, it doesn't really seem like, at least in this first half, that she's doing that, you know? She's kind of like... Does her own thing, which is fine, but like I really hope to see that in the next season, you know. <laughs> I really hope to see her just whacking the shit out of Luffy and Zoro. I know. I will good a good one in the noggin. When Zoro gets too serious, just a good whack. That that is actually another thing to note as well. Uh is that 
Luffy is made of rubber, and so it's said early on that blunt attacks don't work on him because they'll just bounce right off. Uh, but Nami's punches are repeatedly shown to have an effect on him, generating like wounds and bruises on his face, mm-hmm. and you and you miss out on like that sort of subtle uh, gag that only works in the subversion of the established mechanics of the of the world. Um, uh, you're you're missing out on on minor stuff like that. It's like, come on, guys. Yeah, and then like they do have that gag where it's like, oh, we're not a crew, and it's like, okay, it's not funny anymore. Well, yeah, well, <laughs> the... I have a problem with that gag though, not because it's not funny, but because Zoro says least... Zolo should at least feel like they're a crew. <laughs> so why... yeah. Uh, uh, Nami is one thing because she like hates pirates. She has reason for it, and she it, it never uh, admits to being a part of Luffy's crew. Why the fuck? Did, whatever. Uh, until after the Arlong Park stuff happens, um, mm-hmm. but Zoro should immediately after what happens in the uh, Marine base uh, be a part of Luffy's crew, and and he should be accepting of that. Yeah, he's got Luffy's back. That's his bro. That's his captain. He yeah. says like he he says like in one scene he tells somebody like I think it's uh one of Bucky's crew whenever Luffy gets caught by that bird. And um he, he tells like Buggy's uh pirates. I think it's the same one Nami took their ship. Yes. Uh funny. yeah, and, and he was like, Oh, you made me lose track of my friend. Yeah. Like, come on, man. It, so, like, we'll, we'll talk more about it, but Zolo just has, like, no purpose behind going with Luffy. Yeah, that's weird. Just... Um, so, also, Luffy's motivation for going to Shellstown in the Marine base is rather than dropping Kobe... Ra- first of all, rather than going to see Zoro and, in the process, dropping Kobe off at a Marine base, instead... It's about getting the map to the Grand Line. Mm -hmm. And so this is where we start seeing this recurring um, use of the map to the Grand Line being a plot device for everyone, literally nearly everyone except for like Garp. Uh, Everything revolves around this map to the Grand Line. And yeah. it's 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 very silly because while they might all have reasons for getting the map, uh, it, it it's kind of uh, it's just worse than their their actual motivations in in the series proper. It, it, it diminishes their characters for them to all and and dimish, diminishes the emotional impact of any given uh plot of an arc because it's all revolving around this stupid little map yeah 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 definitely it's just uh it's it's just a little too much you know yeah um <laughs> i i also made note when they actually get to shell's town they one of the first things they show is a, a contingent of marines marching through the town it is the shittiest military march you'll ever see uh no oh. I didn't even notice, to be honest, but, like... Yeah, so, I, I don't know if it necessarily is supposed to be deliberately evocative of the Nazis, but it's, like, a similar kind of style of walk, where they're all marching in step with straight legs. It's actually, if anything, most like a, a marching band march. Uh, because mm-hmm. uh, marching bands actually do that kind of marching, um, where your their leg at least appears uh, straight from the outside. Um while taking oftentimes small steps but when the military does it and they're covering like really short distances stepping really quickly uh with the really short steps it looks really goofy uh yeah and whenever you have a military march the point of the march is really realistically more than anything aesthetics it's to evoke a sense of uniformity and power and supremacy power. more than its actual, at least in a modern age, more than its actual um, benefits as a military doctrine. Uh, 
and and here it, it makes the Marines uh look so uh, pathetic <laughs> and weak and stupid. <laughs> yeah, it's um I did I did like the scene of Shellstown, like I did like the atmosphere. We didn't have the yellow. I don't know. I wasn't I think uh... I think there was a little bit of yellow. I'm not entirely sure, though. Well, on the yard, though. Yeah, maybe in the bar, oh, there was too. definitely was yellow. yellow in the yard. Uh, in the town yeah. proper, I don't fully remember. And there was also yellow was... in the bar. <laughs> yeah. But, like, but like when you first arrive and, like, see everything, there's not yellow. Thank God. That's <laughs> what I was thinking this, of. They actually show the sun for a moment. <laughs> yeah, thank God. Oh, there's the sun. <laughs> Oh, I hate oh, that lighting. I hate, the, I hate the lighting, and uh, that that was my complaint, and too, and like a lot of this. The lighting sucks. <laughs> the, light, the lighting is so bad. <laughs> oh, it's just this driving, driving this me nuts. Um, so oh, but I, there was something that I thought was funny, is that like when they get to the bar, that like Sora was dragging around Mr. Seven in a bag into the bar, like, excuse me, sir? Yes. <laughs> That's allowed. Um... <laughs> Okay. I mean, I'm fine with it being allowed. It kind of like says stuff about the society that they live in, and it's kind of, it's kind of, and it's like intimidating in in some way, you know, like don't fuck with me. Uh, and it's very interesting to know that he's just so, dragging around the bag of his bounty. It's just a while, bro. I'm like that that thing probably smells sir it's true it does probably smell it's a miracle he kept like the bottom of the black the bag clean did, did he have a trash bag inside the bag did he double bag it yeah he do did he double bag it uh, <laughs> it's um, just it's gross <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah uh also Luf luffy and kobe in the bar luffy is like proactively theorizing plans to invade the marine base which mm -hmm. is, again, out of character for Luffy, who, in the actual series, just kind of, like, approaches the wall and is like, well, I'm just going to go over the wall then. And, th and that's when he launches himself. He, he yeah. doesn't, like, make any plans before, like, going in. Um, yeah. In addition and to his actual plan, in this case, being going through the sewers all sneaky-like, which is, once again, not a Luffy thing to do. Yeah, and he tells Zoro at one point, like, oh, hey, like, can you, uh, can, can, can you close this thing behind me? Okay, thanks. <laughs> like, yeah, okay, thanks. And make sure nobody knows that I'm here. And it's like, why do you yeah. care so much? You would literally just beat up every single Marine in the base. <laughs> yeah, and then, like, uh, and, and then, like, when him and, when, like, Nami's pretending to be a Marine, which, you know, comes later. Sorry. Um, and, and she's, like, pretending that, um, luffy like she caught luffy um i'm like luffy would never go along with that he he would just say oh hey i'm a pirate and i'm gonna get a map like haha -ha. like yeah oh uh, yeah um yeah there's just it's just all over the place for me so i feel like when i'm watching this i'm just like huh what what's happening why is this happening what <laughs> why, why is it why is it doing this what's what's going on not what's going on but like why are you doing it in this way <laughs> yeah I it's just uh and oh and then i didn't notice i i just like i didn't get this in the when we watched it together but like when i watched it today like nami you, you know she's like she's like at the bar and like this guy comes up to her this marine guy was out, coming up to her and was like oh um uh, can i buy you a drink and she says like oh too tall so i was like oh she doesn't like tall guys well okay yeah and then you know yeah and that bald guy asks, like, uh, or since she goes up to that bald guy and, you know, like, wants a drink with him. And I'm like, ew, why? Well, it was because the uniform would fit her. I'm like, God, I'm yeah. so dumb. See, that is, <laughs> well, see, that is actually good writing. That's yeah. actually smart. That's actually the series doing something in intelligent with its writing. Where you go back to it and at first you might not have, like, picked up on why the it was written in such a way but you realize oh that actually makes sense she wants a uniform that's her size that's why she's going after the bald one uh whereas at first i thought i just thought it was because the bald one was easy easier pickings to manipulate yeah um but it's for the uniform size and it's like ah that's actually interesting yeah so so i, I thought that was great and i i did like i did like um 
how everybody was at the bar. I guess they wanted everybody at the bar so like they could see so Luffy could see Zoro and then like make they make that kind of first connection. Of course like one way connection basically. Yeah. Um <laughs> Luffy looks at him and is like, "Wow, he's a good fighter." <laughs> yeah. But that's not what attracts that's Luffy to Zoro in the first place. Attract Luffy to Zoro. Uh, yeah. It, it, I I mean to some credit in the original series, it's what makes Luffy has have a passing interest in Zoro. Uh, before he even sees Zoro say or do anything at all. Uh, where mm -hmm. he's like, oh, he's used this cool uh, bounty, strong bounty hunter guy who uses three swords. Uh, I'll check him out. That seems interesting. Um, whereas here, his first interaction with Zoro is, wow, he's a good fighter. Uh, because he sees him fight. Yeah. Um, and, um, and, and then again, like, I just, I just didn't like the scene where, like, the little girl just... Yeah. She makes the rice balls for him, and yeah. just because she likes him, like so. Th this is like the perhaps the biggest failure. Like this is the main central failure that uh, causes everything between Luffy and Zoro throughout the rest of this uh, mini just crumbles. arc to, to <laughs> not be impactful or, or make any sense. Uh, and, and it all comes down to the little girl who feeds Zoro rice balls in the original series. Um, in that series, what happens is that uh, Helmeppo, or she does spill some food on Helmeppo. Uh, mm -hmm. And in response, Helmeppo is like, fuck you, little girl. I'm going to set the attack dogs on you. And then Zoro, Zoro then sees that as an unrelated person. And is like, fuck off, dude. Um, and it then turns into this debacle uh, where in where Zoro can, like, murder uh, Helmeppo and, and his contingent if he wants. But in response, Captain Morgan and the Marines there are going to wind up murdering the girl and potentially everybody else in the bar. So Zoro, yeah. makes the, Zoro decides at that point in time, because he's a good person... Uh, to make the compromise of being strung up in the yard for a month instead. Uh, and then from there, because the girl saw Zoro's kindness, she made rice balls for him and snuck into the marine base to give them to him. Yeah. And it's so, like a... Uh, and, and he... You know, it, it's a, such an impactful scene, yeah. and it's just like, it's so sweet, well, that connection. All of this he setup, which I took uh, a hot minute to explain, um, but is realistically doesn't take that long in the actual series, uh, yeah. is to make it to like a chapter. Yeah, <laughs> in the manga. To, yeah, is to first of all show that Zoro is a kind person, and second of all to get you emotionally invested. In Zoro, the girl, the town, and the abuse of the Marines, and it does that very effectively with a, a relatively small event that takes place. Um, and in the live action, what they do instead is they like truncate all of that and combine it all, and not even really. Um, they they combine the eating of the rice ball with the spilling of the food is what they do but mm -hmm. um they what they have happen is that the little girl approaches zoro for no reason uh after cooking him rice balls that don't actually look like rice balls like if you're gonna make rice balls for in your live action series they better look like fucking rice balls instead they look like burnt cookies <laughs> yeah yeah, like, like um, that's what, yeah, or, or that's what I was little, thinking. Or uh, little munchkin donuts, like the donut center holes, something like that. Oh, uh, yeah. Donut the holes, is, yeah. The girl is the first one to approach Zoro. Um, and when Zoro initially, I, I think, refuses uh, to eat the rice balls, uh, she then turns around and spills them on Hameppo, and Hameppo freaks out. Uh, and... He, and he steps on them, you know? Yeah. And so, 
you're missing out on the whole, like, being invested in... Because Helmepo gets madder at Zoro than he does the girl. He doesn't threaten the girl with, like, execution <laughs> for spilling some food on him. Uh, or, instead... like, a threaten to release dogs on her. <laughs> yeah. Instead, he threatens Zoro after Zoro disrespects him and, like, ma and makes fun of Zoro having, like, three swords or whatever. Um, and so you're missing out on the strong emotional connection that the audience gains with the girl and Zoro in the process of the events that happened previously. Because uh, there's a lot less, there's a lot less at stake. The actions themselves come across as a lot less um, kind and eventful. Um, less, it's a lot less dramatic. Mm -hmm. it's, it's just dumber. It's dumber. It's watered down. It's not even. Yeah, it's super. It's it's super watered down. Yeah, and um, it's just like and and he eats like, and he eats them, right? But but like again, like the stakes just aren't as high. Yeah, we aren't emotionally attached, and, and like, I, like again, like it's 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 supposed to be emotional and i guess it's supposed to like show that like zoro doesn't let anybody miss with him so it's supposed to show like zoro's bravery but it just doesn't it doesn't hit misses the mark so hard you know yeah it um, yeah this is a fail and i guess they put the scene there because luffy is there but yeah yeah the, and yeah because well and that's another thing that's weird is that um, in, in the actual series, Luffy hears about Zoro's kindness, and it's most notably hears about it from the townspeople. Um, whereas in the live action, he sees the very watered down version of the kindness. And on top of that, is once again more interested in Zoro being a good fighter than the fact that he's a good person. Yeah. Yeah. It's just, yeah. Um... That all being said, I actually do like the way that Helmepo is acted. Um, he, I, th I think the actor did a good job with Helmepo. Yeah, he did. He um, definitely does like the annoying, uh, spoiled uh, rich kid <laughs> act really good. <laughs> yes. Um, so yeah, uh, the action choreography is good. Zoro isn't as good of a person. Um, eat the rice ball you dropped is not as good as being saved from dogs. Um, and yeah. it makes Luffy's intra interest in it, in it more shallow. So and yeah, then he, and then he repeats the line that he said to Mister Seven, uh, to <laughs> Axehand Morgan. So yeah, he he has Helmepo bring him to Axehand Morgan to turn in the bounty of Mister Seven, and he had said to Mister Seven earlier on when Mister Seven offers to join Baroque Works, he's like, kind of got my own thing going on as a bounty hunter. Uh, mm -hmm. And he repeats that same line to Morgan when he offers for uh, Zoro to become a Marine. And it's like, that's just like a stupid line. <laughs> yeah. It's not as good as the writers apparently think it is. <laughs> yeah, he's supposed to sound like cool and like yeah. detached, you yeah. know, and he's Gotta supposed to sound like a bad boy. Yeah, it's supposed to sound like, like a bad boy and it's just, it just doesn't hit. Um, and another thing I have a problem with is the t there's this term of ag agreement uh, between er, er, Morgan offers terms to Zoro, which is either you join us and become a Marine or I string you up in the yard. And so Zoro takes the stringing up in the yard. But I, I ask the question to myself, there's a third option for Zoro right now to just beat the shit out of all of them he because he can do it. could. <laughs> Yeah, and then because there's no threat to the girl or the townspeople. Yeah, he's like, I, I could, I could just, you know, kill all of you. I'm not that big of a deal. <laughs> and I think it's only for like a week. I, yeah, you know, it it's not also like also only for a week instead of a month. Um, and actually, he gets freed within like the same day too. <laughs> so oh my it's god, like, doesn't even matter. <laughs> yeah. And at the at the point in the manga, I think it's a week. How how long has it been since he's been tied up in the manga? I can't remember, but like, 
he is like literally like yeah, starving it's, it's you know it's, it's like over 20 days in he's close to death but he clearly uh, is determined and has the capability to make it um, yeah, and and he he's still got enough strength to be like trash talking uh, Luffy and, and like yeah, and like telling little girl to like get away, you know. I, I and don't, I don't want to I don't want to talk about him being freed just yet though. <laughs> yeah, that, so that was also worse, um, because uh, so Luffy and Kobe like hang out on on their ship that night uh before they go before Luffy's gonna go into the marine base the next day and they have a conversation where Kobe's like I can't believe some marines are pricks like that and Luffy says if there are good pirates and bad pirates there are good marines and bad marines <sighs> it's yeah I just it's so pathetic and lazy to be first of all saying the themes of your show like that and second of all, to be moralizing the audience. I It's so upsetting for you to just tell me what morals I'm supposed to feel from the story. Show me what morals I'm supposed to feel and let me have my own takeaway as the audience yeah. member. Don't be, fucking say it. Be, <laughs> yeah, because, because this say. arc in the manga and anime clearly tells you that. Clearly. Well, it, it actually doesn't even clearly tell you that. It tells, if anything, it tells you that all cops are bastards. <laughs> Which is to say that even if there are good Marines, the, the tr oppressive structure of the Marines itself is bad. <laughs> so yeah. it's, it's an incredibly awful Americanization of the themes of One Piece to take something that it so obviously is central to what the series is about. That is to say, again, all cops are bastards. <laughs> and to yeah. change that to be like, oh, some of them are good and some of them are bad. But, you know, it, it's just the system that we live under, man. Fuck off. <laughs> yeah. Definitely, it is. It's very annoying, you know. I just, very annoying. It's like it, more than the actual um, mechanics of the adaptation being bad between the writing and the cinematography, the camera work, uh, the acting slash more importantly directing and all that. What makes me the most upset is when you completely and utterly not just misunderstand, but disrespect the series that you are adapting. Fuck. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, it's, um, and, and it, it just, like, it, it feels that, like, with every episode, they're missing the point of... Always missing the point. Of what the arc is trying to tell you. And I'm like, did you read the manga? Did you watch the anime? I'm confused. Apparently the showrunner did. He made a fucking tier list. <laughs> I, I don't I don't believe it, but okay. <laughs> it's kind of I have my doubts. Uh, yeah, it's like, I don't believe him. He just kind of like put the arcs in the different places as he felt like it. <laughs> Even though when he was doing it, it was on the live stream, and he was explaining that he actually did, in fact, consume the series. <laughs> he just, he's just stupid and bad. He just doesn't know. It. He just doesn't. He, he just, he's a child. You know what? The showrunner is actually a child. I don't believe he's an adult. He has zero media, media literacy. He doesn't understand the series that he made at all. <laughs> no, apparently, apparently not. Apparently not. And, uh, that and and it's just so it, entirely studio controlled, and and he just, and he was unable to to do anything about it. It was one or the other, but I believe I would be more willing to believe it was the former than the latter. <laughs> yeah, and I can understand like if if that did happen, but like you would hear about it if that did happen. Yeah, you, would you would hear about it through the grapevine series after it came out to be like I there I have issues with some of the things that happened in the series. Or maybe Oda would have said some shit about it as well, but instead Oda is constantly... So maybe Oda might not even understand his own series that he's writing. Oda didn't get it. I'm sorry. <laughs> Oda, 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 
doesn't understand his own series. Um, Oda was but, like, "I'm just getting money from this. I don't care." Yeah. I, well, honestly, I think that I think that is actually what it is. I think Oda is just like, uh, "This if this kind of looks cool at times, and I'm getting a paycheck from it." Um, and I don't actually give a shit about a live action adaptation of my baby, my, my series, because <laughs> I, I, I like it is, if anybody cares about the series as much as I do, they will read what I wrote, then they do not yeah. need a bastardized this. live action American version of it. Uh, they should read my work. Um, so and I, I did... You know. I did hear that the uh that the creator of uh what's it called Cowboy Bebop hated the live action yes, and he like hated the he said Bebop live action and much of the reason why the Cowboy Cowboy Bebop Cowboy Bebop live action <laughs> from what I understand because I haven't actually watched it um are actually a lot of the same reasons why this one is bad uh where it I heard they changed a lot yeah like and they just well, they changed over their a lot here too. Where it just misunderstands the original series and has really amateurish and shitty uh, technical um, aspects to it. Yeah. And and then, like, they I, I heard they added, like, a bunch of stuff in that, like, wasn't needed. And, like, they were trying to be, like, woke and it just, like, didn't, like, hit right. Like, I think they, it's just... I mean, you don't... I, you know, I actually don't know in the case of Cowboy Bebop. I never f watched the full series, but you don't need... Oh, it's my favorite. In, it's like in the a, top. In a good series and in a good adaptation of a series, you shouldn't need to try and be woke or modernize it, um, at least in regards to something like One Piece. One Piece is really fucking woke. <laughs> you don't yeah, and need so is to Cowboy try Bebop. and make it more woke. They have a trans character in Cowboy Bebop, and it was made in, like, what, the 90s? They have, like, an island of trans people in One Piece. <laughs> so, like, I don't get it. And, and then they have, they have two, they have, uh, two gay people, like, uh, you know, in bed together in, uh, Cowboy Bebop that, Damn. that, uh, <laughs> that somebody walks in on, and they're just like, oh, okay, like, did you see the guy that ran in here? That ran through here? Because they're trying to c catch somebody. You know, and it's just they, like, maybe it's, they should it's never fine. Maybe Cowboy Bebop. We were having kind of like a gay panic at the time, if I remember correctly. <laughs> yeah. So it was just like, I just, it just it wasn't needed, apparently. Like, apparently they tried to make a character gay and like go off on that story and it just like, wasn't needed. But like, whatever. Actually, I, but, I, but I, think yeah, I remember like, that and it was like one line. Oh, no, it was a different really shitty line <laughs> of like... Uh, the, the big black guy, what's his name? Um. I don't remember. I can't remember. He's one of the main characters of Cowboy Bebop. <laughs> Look, like I'm so tired of, I don't know okay. what's happening. Okay. Um. Give me a break. There, there was, he was having, like, a, a conversation with some lady at, like, a party or whatever, and, and she mm -hmm. was, like, flirting and coming on to him, and it was, like, the fucking awful line. Uh, I'm gonna see if I can find it while we're still talking about other parts of One Piece live action. Um, yeah, but um, what else did I have written down about it? Um, yeah, and then you have Luffy. Um, once Luffy finds out that like Helmeppo is not going to free him, not gonna free Zoro, like man, no, Luffy no, like sucker punches him. <laughs> no. Oh, are you? Oh, you're saying in the in the actual anime? Never mind. Yeah, in the anime. <laughs> so, like, so, I was uh, gonna say that the the most that the live action alludes to uh, Zoro not being that is not going to be greed is Helmeppo makes a vague threat that Captain Morgan will never set you free, and there's like no indication that 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 would actually be the case. <laughs> Yeah, especially since it's only again like within the day that he got strung up the twenty four. Yeah, and uh, Captain Morgan like never talks about him again. Never talks about the Logan. Yeah, me. And um, I, well, I think I found and, it. And <laughs> and Luffy says like a really good line that I like in the anime. Um, he says, "Scum is scum," and it shows uh Luffy's strong morals. How he wants to protect others and how he shows what he values and like the live action just doesn't 
doesn't do that. So like, yeah. I hate it. All right. you, you see my uh, YouTube screen right now? Yep. Me, you, bottle of Chianti, two bottles of we're feeling dangerous. What the heck? <laughs> Sounds to me like blackmail. Damn right it is, because Jack, you are black and you are male. What? What? <laughs> what was that? Ew! Oh, no! That's right, Jet, because you are black and you are male. <laughs> I am disturbed. Ew. Oh, oh my it's god. So bad. <laughs> oh my god. I gotta I gotta tell my nephew about that. <laughs> I gotta show my nephew that clip. You gotta send it to me. Oh, jeez. Oh, I already... I'll send it to you later. I already closed okay. the tab. Um... Okay. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, so my... Fucking bad. Why? Why? Uh... <laughs> I'm not... I'm... Now I'm so distracted. Look, I'm not gonna be able to talk about this. <laughs> so... Look, if somebody... Look, if somebody, like, were to flirt with me like that and, like... <laughs> I would die. Oh, I would. I would you run. Are Latino, I would you run. You are a woman. <laughs> oh, uh, I would die. I just, I just no. Oh my god, why? I'm so embarrassed. I'm so embarrassed. Oh jeez, <clears throat> that's so cringe. But that is something an old white woman would say, though. Honestly, <laughs> but this is like a sci-fi future. Old white women. We would hope that they're less racist by then. Yeah, because like in the actual anime, they're they're like fine, you know, like uh, they're not racist. I'm confused. <laughs> oh, uh, okay, all right, all right, all right. That was so, so cringe. So once once again, we have to ask the question: of Why is Luffy sneaking around? Because he sneaks into the base via the sewer this time instead of flinging himself in by flying they make a joke about that in the bar between him and kobe even he's mm -hmm. like how do i sneak to the base oh maybe if i set myself flying in, into it or whatever and so, it, it, so you're making a joke about the thing that actually did happen in the series that you're adapting instead of like doing it why 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 i have to ask why why is this a different character why just do it just do it <laughs> It's like it's, it's like you're reminiscing. It's it's like you're talking about a past life. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what, are we, what are we doing here? <laughs> why 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 are we here? Was was all of One Piece a hallucination that I made <laughs> for the past twenty five years? Uh, that, it, was... <laughs> it felt like it, you know. <laughs> Must have been. Yeah. Um... Uh, also, <sighs> again, Zoro's not allowed to smile, uh, even though he's, when Luffy interacts with him on the post in the actual series, he is smiling because he's, like, determined and confident in himself. He's like, I'm gonna get out of this, because I'm a Giga Chad, uh, and I'm the best. And in this case, he's like, Yeah, and he mumbles a lot. Like, in, in all the interviews I watched, he opens his mouth when he talks, like... Like, I mumble, okay, but, like, that's just because uh, I have a disability, okay? But, like, <laughs> Zolo does not have a disability. He can open his mouth. Let him open his mouth when he talks, okay? <sighs> oh. Oh. All right. Um, so, what, I, so, there's, so here we have a situation where Zoro is strung up on the post, um, and Luffy sneaks into the courtyard and is like, I, I get, I'll free this guy because I want him to join my crew. Uh, and Zoro is not very enthused by that prospect. And the reason why is because he's not in any kind of danger. There, there was no, uh, point to him being on the post in the first place. There's no reason to believe he'll actually be executed instead of living through the seven days. Um, there's no danger to the townspeople. So, uh, like, Luffy is not saving Zoro here. And mm -hmm. he is not, at the same time, also demonstrating to Zoro what makes him charismatic and a person worth following. Um, 
And and as a consequence of that as well, because him saving Zoro doesn't um uh isn't the opening a, to a major fight scene, uh you also don't get the the line where he says something to the effect of I nothing less than the world's greatest swordsman belongs on my crew. Um Yeah. So you get no there's no sense of allegiance that Zoro would ever demonstrate towards Luffy. And you get that you get and so the they have to acknowledge this later on when they're actually doing the courtyard brawl because uh, Zoro gets his swords and he like goes to leave and he sees the open door and he's like I can just leave um I don't need to be here I don't need to fight anybody uh yeah and you could say that he stays because he's a good person um but, but we don't time, really yeah you don't really see that and you still have to ask the question of uh why doesn't he just leave <laughs> the, yeah if, if he has no allegiance to luffy and, oh and, and then like luffy like in the anime he he like gets helmopo and he's dragging helmopo around trying to ask him where the where zoro's swords are yeah there's another he plus does, for yeah, zoro that's the other plus of it is he gets zoro's swords back for him yeah. to help to like give him even more of a reason to join his crew instead zoro has to get his swords himself in here so it's like again i don't understand what's happening <sighs> um one thing i did like that i did find funny and interesting was um helmeppo's nude sword fantasy i thought that was a funny scene yeah that was funny <laughs> and it was comical that Zoro gave him his shitty haircut, but I mean, it probably would have been better if he was, if he just had the shitty haircut to begin with, because that helps indicate the fact that he's, you know, <laughs> obnoxious <laughs> and <stupid>. dumb. <laughs> yeah, obnoxious but more and than dumb. Anything, just kind of stupid. <laughs> um, yeah. But it does make for a funny joke that he gave him the shitty haircut. Yeah, definitely. And, um, I did, I did like the fight scene between like, um, Axan Morgan and Zoro and Luffy. I thought that was fun to watch. Like... I didn't. And the reason why is because either one of them <laughs> could have easily beat up Axan Morgan on their own. Yeah. But they extended it, you know. Should have been able to, at least. Um, I thought it was. And it's like, okay, the choreography is, is solid and neat once again. This is like the only thing that the uh studios behind these live action adaptations of specifically cowboy bebop and uh one piece uh, it's like the only thing that they're good at is action choreography they should just be a a action choreography studio uh with, leave the writing to somebody else <laughs> uh, well i don't know if, i don't actually know like what they had their hands in um but i think they also did costume and set design which actually also was pretty good in in the one piece um, My one complaint, though, with the costumes is that the hair and makeup were not consistent, and I did not like that. And some of the costumes were ugly. I didn't totally notice. Yeah, some of them were didn't really work quite well, and I think some of that has to do with, uh, again, how One Piece is originally as a series. Um, no, they could have done better. I don't care. They yeah, could have done better. I mean, they, I, they could have been done better i won't say that they couldn't have been done better um, yeah because some of them like were completely original you know and it, it's just like and, and then the hair like i understand you're dying zoro's hair green i understand nami's hair is like bright orange but again why in the same day is her hair vibrant one day and then like <laughs> like faded orange you know, in the next she scene. Didn't have time to die the next morning. <laughs> Apparently. Uh, and then, um... I'm, I'm try trying to think. She died at least four times a day. <laughs> at least, apparently. And Zoro's hair, too. I'm like, just just get him a wig. Like, like why why don't they, they have wigs? They probably should have just used wigs instead of hair dye. Honestly. And then, um... And, and then, yeah, when the Nami's hair, too, like, in one scene, her hair is like... 
a, like perfectly like straightened. It's like perfectly done. Then the next scene, it's like it's supposed to be like in the same day, and it's all raggedy and like gross. And I'm like, what happened? This is supposed to be like in the same hour. What, like, girl, what happened? Like, you couldn't just touch her up. I'm just, I, I didn't like it. It's just lazy. It's just lazy. Uh, it sounds like it. That's not the type of thing that I'm preconditioned in noticing, though. So I'll take your word for it. It's lazy. I'm over it, basically. I mean, the, the rest of the series indicates that, you know, they're pretty lazy. <laughs> yeah, honestly. Um, or actually, rather than lazy, the rest of the series just indicates that they're incompetent. But that it is entirely possible that they were lazy for that. Yeah. Um, I, I mean, I like, like I said, I understand it's a lot to keep up with, with dying and redying here but like you have um like the hunger games it does a really good job keeping up with the crazy makeup and hair so like come on now get it together <laughs> and that's not even like a particularly good set of movies <laughs> yeah they're not they're like they're kind of hot 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 garbage <laughs> you know but like at least they're consistent with hair and makeup you know um so i actually didn't um write any notes for uh really any of the like nami stuff where she is trying to steal the map in the map room and she's like tricking people and fighting and she meets luffy and whatever i actually didn't write anything about that i thought it was fine i didn't either um i really liked that they gave her more stuff to do because we do kind of see her kind of sneaking around in the anime but like we didn't really yeah. know what her purpose is you know but we see her doing a lot more they gave her some fighting scenes you know so like it's, i did like that it's nice giving her more to do i do have a bit of a problem with having her engage in more fighting though mm -hmm. uh particularly in the case of uh, the big courtroom brawl with the marines that's because nami is consistently shown to be cowardly in part because she's you know, among the weakest of the Straw Hats, even though she's stronger than a normal person. Um, so I, I have a, a bit of an issue with her being so readily uh, willing to engage in combat against presumably uh, trained, uh, the trained police force of the world. Yeah. Um, but, it, I mean, it's, it's okay. She's a different character, man. I, you know... If you just treat them as different characters, it's not as insulting. <laughs> See, and that's what I was trying to do. But then, like, I was like, this isn't the same. This isn't the same. This isn't the same. And then some parts of the like, <laughs> what's happening? Yeah. So, um, my... let's see. What else? All right. Oh, yeah. I did. Um... Yeah, and oh, and then we got to see Zoro put on his little scarf around his head. I thought that was nice, you know. Well, that's even a little bit after what I was going to say. Cause I, oh, okay. My next note was actually when they go into Captain Morgan's office. Uh, it, you see in the office, it's decorated with, uh, like, paintings and whatnot modeled after him. And it's like, okay, he's a narcissist, all right. Uh, but it's, once again, not as strong of a point as when the original series does it when he's erecting a massive statue of himself on top of that literally lo looks like uh the jesus statue in brazil that yeah, looks like jesus <laughs> um yeah and, and part of the reason for that isn't just the fact that he's erecting his own christo redentor uh but also because he's slave driving his own uh cadets and, and marines into erecting that statue and he so, takes one out oh yeah and so you see not just that he's a massive narcissist but also that he's a dictator you don't get any of that dictatorial uh, uh impression in the live action you see that yeah. Helmepo is profiting off of nepotism but you don't really see that Axan Morgan is particularly mistreating of his Marines. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So you're missing the point. Well, it seems like it almost seems like he's in. I mean, he's kind of. I guess he would kind of be kind of incompetent in the anime, but he's like really incompetent in the live action. Like, what are you doing, bud? <laughs> like, he don't know what he's doing in the live action. You know. Yeah. I feel like, anyways. Um. 
And then also, uh, they, they do the thing where they're, like, opening the safe or whatever. And I didn't write down what he said that was stupid, but I noted down, why did he know that he said something stupid? That, that <laughs> what he said was a joke. Luffy's supposed to be stupid. And if he knows, if, if, this is a different character who knows when he's saying something stupid. Why did he also deliberately say the stupid thing that mm -hmm. obviously pissed Nami off? I, I just when you when you first tackle the question of why did he why did he know he said something stupid? Um, and with the answer of it's a different character, you then have to answer tackle the question of why did he say something stupid deliberately? It, these are unnecessary yeah. questions to ask. Just it's just have the same character. <laughs> Stop yeah, just have the same. Mind. Yeah, and um, man, whenever uh, whenever Nami is like getting the map. I feel like it's uh it's kind of weird to have Luffy kind of be there helping whenever like Nami has the skills to open this you know like in the anime she has the skills to open the safe by herself and get the map out like you know well, they they made the lock trickier in this one apparently it mm -hmm. took her a lot longer she even had to work on it on on the ship for a mm -hmm. long period of time after they escaped yeah um, and I just uh at which point in time and, and then like basically hugs her and like rests his head on hers. <laughs> It's like, what is this like uh, scripting? Why did you Why did you script him to do that? That's like way too yeah. intimate. <laughs> yeah, Luffy's not a hugger, bro. Uh, has he hugged anybody? I don't know. Um, I don't particularly remember actually. Luffy's kind of a uh, Luffy kind of he's a little neurodivergent. Like uh, he kind of comes off as a person that doesn't like hugs. <laughs> That, Luffy mean, is basically that's not like the me. He doesn't like hugs, but he's definitely neurodivergent. No, no. Look, some neurodivergent people don't like hugs. I'm one of those people. I don't like hugs. Okay, I, I just saying. But yeah, he doesn't. Um. Oh, and then like um, Nami is able to give him like enough leverage to like open the safe or like get the safe out. Like she, she, you know, he's trying to pull on the safe to get it up. And she, like, gives him a hand, like, she wraps her arms around him and lifts him, too. I'm no, like, no, thanks. The reason, the reason she does that is because she knows that the kickback of uh, pulling mm -hmm. it up, prying it out of the ground, is gonna send her send them flying. Mm. Um, oh, okay. So she's using him as, like, a cushion? Uh, not necessarily a cushion, but as an escape route. Um, mm. I see. So I thought she was, like, pulling on him, basically. No. I mean, it, it, that, I mean, I guess that technically could be a part of it, but no, it, it, the indication uh, is much more so that she's hanging on to him for, like, effectively dear life, knowing mm. that he's going to end up launching himself backwards. I see, I see. Okay, okay. Um, I, so, th that all happened... Th th now the fighting in the courtyard that we've already talked much about happens and i did actually know i also as much as the choreography is generally really good i really am not a fan of luffy's fighting style um it, because it it looks a lot more strategic um, no <laughs> uh it, the way that he like it spends most of his fighting dodging uh and like uh, sort of lax not like lackadaisically but um haphazardly like tackling people and whatnot mm. um it looks very silly but not in like a good one piece silly kind of way um it, it just looks kind of dumb uh in particular though one thing i actually had an issue with uh that's like an actual issue i should say uh, is one of the times in which he punches somebody, he then, like, looks at his own arm, and, like, its muscle, and is like, wow, I'm, like, impressed with my own strength here. It's like, you shouldn't be. You should know your own strength. <laughs> like, why are you so impressed you managed to punch a guy? 
I think I think they're doing that to try to make him like goofy, like like Luffy is in the anime, but like it just like again, it's just weird, you know? Yeah. I, I think And so he also I think winds they up probably... taking out like a whole lot less opponents than even Nami because he spends most of his time dodging rather than actually fighting people. Yeah. And it feels like he kind of uses his powers a lot less, like, on people. Yes, he definitely uses them a lot less. But, uh, to be fair, he doesn't actually use them all that often uh, on people who aren't, like, close to him in strength. Mm, yeah, um, that's true. When it, Usually when pe people are, like, far below his skill, he... Like, uh, for example, uh, Bellamy in Jaya. He, he doesn't even bother using his powers against that guy because he understands this guy is nothing to me. Hmm. Um, and similarly, uh, against even, like, crowds of scrublets, uh, he doesn't usually... He, the most he uses his power is, like, crowd control rather than actual... Um, uh, it being, like, a component of his casual fighting. Hmm, Yeah. Yeah, I guess that's true. That makes sense. Yeah. Um, th so that's me being charitable to the live action that almost certainly did it be to lessen the amount of visual effects that they had to do. <laughs> mm. Yeah. Um, but uh, I, I don't particularly like what they did with his brawling fighting style uh, without yeah. the rubber. Mm hmm Yeah, and... um. I did like the actor who played Axan Morgan. I think he did a good job with the script and everything. With what but again, that? the narcissism... <laughs> yeah. The narcissism and, like, big ego just isn't there, you know. It's a different character. It's a different Axan Morgan, so... Yeah. Um, the next few things we already talked about, uh, but in the process of fighting Axan Morgan, when Luffy and Zoro decide to, like, actually work together to fight him, there's this uh shot where it's a sort of like standoff uh and it cuts between the three of their eyes it like shows morgan's eyes and then it cuts in luffy's eyes on the screen and then it cuts in zoro's eyes on the screen mm -hmm. and uh i just thought it was silly uh, i was like why are you doing this <laughs> yeah it's supposed to be like all right here we go let's go yeah, here's the it, duel it's Something like that is technically far more of a stylistic choice than um, any sort of, like, substantive choice that any particular um, work of art could do. But, I don't know, it doesn't seem... It fell out of place. Yeah, out of place doesn't seem particularly fitting. Yeah, definitely. I would um, say so as well. Yeah. Uh, also, as uh, to even further... Uh, or, uh, demonstrate that this is Zolo and not Zoro. Uh, he doesn't name his attacks anymore. It's too cool for that. He's uh, he's too cool for school, you know. Yeah, and and Luffy says that it's their uh, all the fighters call out the names of their finishing moves, and it's like nah, not really. They they, they call out the the names of their like regular moves too. And Zoro has a number of them. <laughs> he has he has quite a number of them. And now you're just gonna cut out all of the names of his attacks. He's no longer gonna say like. Onigiri or, or 3000 Worlds or fucking whatever the name of his attacks are? No. Because he hardly ever speaks. So, like, why yeah. would he do that? Because he, 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 he has no emotion. He has no exuberance. He doesn't want to smile. Uh, I mean, at least he's good to look at on screen, you know? <laughs> <laughs> and at least he's pretty. <laughs> at least he's pretty. Yeah. And he's such a great actor. That's what I'm saying. He's so, it's such a good actor. And he's wasted, wasted talent. So wasted. Um, Hurts my then, soul. And then to cap off the fact that they completely missed the point of this arc. They don't have the Marines do a send-off of Luffy and Zoro. And in this case, Nami as well. Uh, out of, like, respect for the fact that they liberated the marines from the uh authoritarian axan morgan yeah um, it's, it, once again you're just missing the point <laughs> by not having that instead of uh, by having them just run away from the marines instead of having that situation happen you're missing the point yeah one thing that i wrote down was like um whenever kobe 
um, it, it's like decides to stay in Shell Town. But he says in the live action, he says, I'm going to help people who can't help themselves. And it's like, okay, we're not really getting that message here in the live action. So I don't know why you would say that. But anyways. Yeah. And then, <laughs> but in the manga, he says, you taught me to fight for what I believe in. That is a much better thing to say. Yeah. Yeah. You're just missing that. Yeah. <laughs> and then on and top I of that, in regards to Kobe, you're not, you're also missing the scene where Luffy and Zoro trick the Marines into thinking that Kobe is unrelated to that, or rather that they kicked him, dissociated with him so that they can give Kobe the opportunity to work for the Marines. Yeah. And, 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 and Kobe, and Kobe like punches Luffy, you know, and Luffy just, <laughs> lets yeah. Him, you know? Yeah. But like, so it's, uh, it's so humble, you know, Luffy's a humble guy. Yeah. You know, it's great. Right. But like, we don't get, we don't get that. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, but um what, what i put was like kobe's journey is about like building confidence and following his dreams so like um again the line of i'm going to help people that can't help themselves it just it just again just falls flat because yeah. like that's not like a part of his journey like I mean, the, I, it is ultimately why he wants to be marine is to help people yeah um but it, it just it, you're right it just doesn't work in the live action it just doesn't yeah so like we could have done a better job but we didn't so yeah. yeah um uh so once again zoro having no allegiance to luffy is not good uh and then we transition over to a garf scene um i do think the transponder snails are funny looking i hate them they're disgusting they freak me out i i feel like that's part of the point though which is why i kind of like them um, and they're, and they're pretty clearly, like, puppets as well, which I think is funny. It kind of reminds, I think I remember what movie it reminds me of. Let me look it up. Uh, ha I, oh, I, have you seen, have you seen The Dark Crystal? I haven't seen it. I have heard it in passing, though. I, yeah. Whenever I hear The Dark Crystal... For some reason, it always, like, connects in my mind to that David Bowie movie, Labyrinth, even though I'm pretty sure they're unrelated, completely unrelated to each other. <laughs> I think... I think they might have, like, the same director or something. I can't remember. Maybe. They're kind of related. I think they kind of come... When you buy the DVDs, they come in the same pack. So, I think they're related somehow. I don't know. <laughs> if that helps. Because, like, I have the DVDs. <laughs> but anyways... That that's the the that's what the transponder snails remind me of. They remind me the of the puppets in the Dark Crystal, and, and, and yeah. now they're going to remind me of David Bowie fondling balls <laughs> <laughs> and and having a clearly visible penis underneath his costume. <laughs> Look, we stand. Oh my God, we stand. I love David Bowie, man. Yeah. He's great. I just, I just up as, like remember in high school when we you, we had like '80s Day and like '90s Day. I dressed up as David Bowie for '80s Day. I gotta find that picture and send it to you. It was great. <laughs> <laughs> uh, David I, Bowie is my king. Uh, One time for Halloween, I did dress up as Jesus though, and it was pretty funny. I brought a loaf of bread and a bottle of grape and a uh, thing of grape juice to school. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> you, you should have brought some fish too. <laughs> <laughs> now, I I was working on a on a low budget. All right, <laughs> okay, couldn't afford the fish. Bummer, yeah, bro. <laughs> um, <sighs> the, 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 yeah, the, and it's like, go ahead. The, the other thing about the transponder snail, though, is I do think is a little bit of a shame that they have the transponder snails modeled after the people who owned them, rather than mm -hmm. them transforming into the person who is speaking at the other end. Yeah, that's so funny, you know? Uh, well, I'm I'm saying it's it's funnier in the actual One Piece, where each of the transponder snails is able to take on, like, the physical characteristics yeah. of the person who's speaking. Yeah, I think Whereas that's better. Whereas in this one, they, they are entirely static and just, like, modeled after the person that they, who owns them. Yeah, and, um... Yeah, and then Nami has that itty bitty transponder snail. I thought that was that was kind of cute. Yeah, I mean, yeah, sure. 
Um, oh there, my god. There, there are smaller transponder snails and, and like whatnot. Um, I, I it's I it's cuter I, than the big ones. Well, yeah, because big you ones see it up close. The big ones scare me. I don't like every them. Slug is cute because most slugs are pretty small. Um, I like slugs. Okay, like after, I, yeah, I like slugs and snails, but like the transponder snails freak me out. Like, like um, I like you know, I I don't step on slugs and snails. Like after it rains, I make sure to like put them outside. So I'm one of those people. So yeah. yeah. Um, and so also of course the one question to constantly, continuously be asking yourself throughout the entirety of the live action is why is Garth here? Why is he here? I, I don't, don't like. I don't, I, uh, he's here. <laughs> I don't have. I don't have any notes on Garp because I don't like Garp. And he's not yeah. worth talking about. He's, you mean, know, he's, even if you dislike him in in the original series, he's. I like him in the original series. He's I, funny. I, yeah. All right. Good. We don't disagree on that front because he's so. Again, the live action is neutering the characters by making them more like serious and dramatic. Uh, in Garp is so lively in the actual series. Yeah. Why is he so serious and dramatic? I don't understand. You know, it's it's that Scottish in him makes him real serious. Yeah. I guess. Uh, Must be. And, and so while he's in the East Blue for seemingly seemingly no reason. Um, oh, aren't they going after Borough Works for some reason? <laughs> they aren't going after Borough Works, but. When they get the report about the raid on the base in Shellstown, uh, he, the his um assistant does ask if it's a lead on Baroque Works, and I remember uh, while we were watching it asking the question, "Wait, why?" Uh, because he follow Garp follows up by saying that that's like a cold lead that they've had for a long time. In addition to them not being in active pursuit of Baroque works at the moment and having no, like, reason to suspect that any random call-in on their ship is going to be about Baroque works. It could be about, mm -hmm. like, fucking anything. So, like, why does he think it's about Baroque works? Why did he ask the question? Yeah, again, it's just... <laughs> Stupid. It, it's it's also clearly in service oh. of trying to set up Alabasta in advance, but it, you shouldn't try and set something up by using writing that doesn't work. <laughs> and, oh, and, and then because like, oh, we ha remember Mister Seven. Remember that scrub. Yeah, <sighs> it's fine. It's fine to include something like Mister Seven that early on. Uh, in the yeah. Of no, but you're supposed to works. make the connection. You know. Well. I, I, you're supposed to make that a, that connection when you actually get to Laboon. <laughs> you're you're yeah. not supposed to... And that's under the presumption that Mr. Seven would have actually been included in the original series, of course. You're not supposed to yeah. make that a, uh, connection to uh, somebody asking a question that they admit doesn't even make any sense in the <laughs> same sentence. <laughs> you know, he, you know that man, he was like, he really has a bone to pick with Baroque works. Yeah, he's just... Everything is about Baroque works to him, man. <laughs> yeah, and um, what 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 I put after like after I was thinking about the end of this episode, I put the like everyone puts a, like when I think about the manga, I put the like everybody puts aside the rules that they're supposed to follow and like what kind of the rules society wants them to follow, um, and those surface level ideals. To, like, follow their true dreams and to show how they truly feel about things. And, um, the live action just doesn't send that message. Yeah. To the audience. Uh, yeah, it's a, it's a total messaging failure. Uh, in every arc. <laughs> yeah. Um, so that was depressing. My, my last note on the first episode is that there's a brief introduction of, uh, Buggy to transition into the next episode um and i i asked the question why is buggy's intro so much like joker especially since in, a, in the next episode he's actually not all that joker like um he he actually has uh a, a fairly unique personality in that respect um and 
uh, is, is, is his own, he's his own person and his own character in that episode. But in this intro, he does like the maniacal crazy laugh, uh, at, at, to, to send off the episode. And it's like, why, why are you just coming across as, as Joker instead of like being your own character in this moment, especially when you're not going to be like Joker in the next episode? Yeah. Cause it's like, Ooh, scary. Who is this villain? Ooh, scary clown mm-hmm. guy. Ooh, scary clown pirate. I'm like, this is a buggy. That's not my buggy. Oh, okay. yeah. Um, I have hardly any notes on episode two. I, I still have a lot end. to say about episode two. <laughs> I have, if anything, more to say about episode two. Episode. Seriously? I just like, um... let, me, let me, let me, let me just show it to you. It's in, it's in red pen, so you can even see the difference uh, between that and, and, um, the other one so here we have this is the start of my notes and oh my gosh oh my gosh this is all still episode one (laughs) and oh no here's here's where episode one ends and episode two begins (laughs) oh no it keeps going (laughs) and it keeps going (laughs) and there's episode three (laughs) Oh my gosh. Um, so if we're done with episode one, it's been over two hours. Uh, <laughs> if you if you want, we can call it here, and then maybe we, because we covered a lot of like initial ground on on our thoughts on on the series, maybe we can get through the other episodes more quickly next time. <laughs> yeah, I think so. I think I'm good with that because I'm like. <laughs> I'm so exhausted talking about it. Oh my god! Uh, I'm like, so <laughs> I'm like, man, I'm so exhausted talking about something so negative. <laughs> uh, meanwhile, for me, <laughs> make, being mad and making fun of things gives me superpowers. It gives me more energy, if anything. Like uh, when we were actually watching this this show together. <laughs> if anything, I was getting more awake the more frustrated i got with this series <laughs> you know usually i thrive off of negativity but i don't know something about this live action just like just, just, put me in a bad me, mood <laughs> it, just, it gives me so much adrenaline to talk so much shit <laughs> look i i love talking smack too i mean you hear me talking smack all the time but like yeah. dang <laughs> live right. action just just the worst yes <laughs> All right, and so with that, next time on the Pirate Odyssey, one of us might break out into tears as we continue complaining about the series. And and the bad tears, not the good tears, the bad tears. No, it's going to be the bad tears. Uh, So until then, fucking peace. Good night, bros.